Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to In Depth. It is episode number 20, the big 2 Damn. Damn. Uh, sorry that we missed you last week. I was busy having, having a, a new baby. Yep. Congratulations. She's pretty cute, right? She is very cute. You just held her for a little bit before we started yeah. up here. It's, she's pretty adorable. I feel like so uncomfortable ha handling babies because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. and I like if Well, she almost fits in your hand, that's too. True. You're so yeah. much bigger. I, I could, you could do just this. just break yeah. her Like so a burrito. But, uh, anyways, uh, we're back, and it will stay steady. Yes. Um, yeah. That was, obviously, you know, I have to be there for the birth of the child. My wife yes. won't let me not do that. So, anyways, sorry for missing that episode, everybody. Uh, of course, we just had WCS Fall wrap up. God, that's an annoying BC. Um <laughs> But yeah, we just had WCS Fall wrap up, right. and uh, obviously we saw that Sarah was the victor of that. Uh, no big surprise there over Rainer in the finals. I did get to catch that finals. I did not. What time was that? Uh, was that it, been like it was like 6.30 oh, a.m. or okay. so, our time. I was going to say that makes sense again. Yeah, I guess. maybe 7 a.m. I went to bed something. at like 2 or 3, and it was still Oh, yeah, along. I know. You were, f you were far off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I uh, got to see that, and um, yeah, I mean, very, very cool stuff. I haven't seen uh, very much else as of yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we, I, the, the problem with us guys is like it starts at like 10 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> so even if we if we go to bed at like two or three, we're only catching half the games easily. Once upon a time, I would stay up really late and watch tournaments. Yeah. Not anymore. You know how you guys mm. like watch DSL at like 5 a.m. and you're like, I'm gonna stay up for yeah. this. Yeah, it's like that for us. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a reverse. Actually. It's a reverse. It's perfectly, yeah. That's a perfect example. But. That's also it. Could be interesting for in depth if we don't catch everything because we oh, can certainly. form opinions without yeah, yeah conclusions. The thing is, I'm sure there's some interesting games that uh, we might not end up getting to see, but we have the replay pack. Obviously, uh, it was released publicly if you want to check them out yourself. Uh, but we were looking through the bracket, and one thing jumped out to me that I I, I kind of pressured Jake into <laughs> looking at with me here, and that is uh, the part of the bracket with Clem, Neeb, and Harstam in it. So the round of 24, Clem three ones Harstam. Now, Hurstum, uh, I have great respect for as a player. I think he's uh, a brilliant player, like really good, has a more Korean-heavy style than most Europeans. I have a great Europeans. respect for his personality. Oh, yeah, no, he's got, like, the best personality. That's, like, he's, crazy. yeah, he's got 100 out of 100 yeah, personality. Yeah, no, I want him to be the world champion based on his that personality. That would be a, the most And his height thing. and his handsomeness. He's so and handsome. And his lips. Yeah, he's um, got great lips. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he, like, he got 3-1 <laughs> by Clem, which is like, oh, okay, yeah, Clem, we really like Clem. We've done... Uh, yeah, we've done some Clem replays on the show before, uh, so that it wasn't like it's some gigantic surprise. Yeah, it's, it's, not an, it's not an incredible upset. Like, yeah, it, it, it could have gone either way. As soon as I saw the match, I knew I'd end up watching it regardless. But mm -hmm. then I saw the next round where Neeb three O's Clem. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that's very different, right? Now, mm -hmm. Harsum is not the best foreign Protoss. That's Neeb, so obviously, yeah, Neeb should beat basically everyone till he hits Serral, and yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly what happened. But at the same time, 3-0 and then a 3-1 in the other direction. So uh, looking at those two sets together, uh, I think is, is fascinating. Right. So, yeah. it, like, it's it's all – the thing is we don't even know what we're going to find. Like, did Clem play very well against Harsom? Does his style match up well against what Harsom brought to the tournament? Oh. Yeah. There's one thing that's interesting about PVT is there's a lot of stylistic clashes in PVT, I yes, think. Yes, there's a lot like, of them. Yeah, certain players just play better than others. Like, or certain players play up against each other better. Mm. I think that's one of the... The PVT is probably one of the strongest matches for that. Possibly TVZ. Like, when you look at Rainer versus Fantasy, you're like, okay, well, that's a stylistic clash there. Right? Yes, yes. Where we're like, Rainer is supposed to be one of the best Zergs out of everybody, but it just doesn't... F his style doesn't play well against mm. Fantasy because Fantasy doesn't allow it to. You know, it, like it, It's funny how much we have things like that that people don't realize. I see so many people that just predict things. There's like, this player's better than that player. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. The styles here are so different. Like, this player's better than that player is true, but this player versus that player, yeah, yeah. it's not the same thing. Yes. Yeah. It's, it, that's so true. I, yeah. I think the stylistic tendencies are so interesting. overlooked by a lot of people. It's so interesting. We have to start making our scorecards for people yeah. and talk about their styles more because this is one of the things you and I keep coming yeah, back to. We is, should do that. Is styles and like who's good at what and things like that and that's Our scorecards are gonna be great we oh, really should start doing it soon because as we do more players on in depth we can update scorecards yeah that's true we're gonna I feel like they're gonna after. get out of depth as well um <laughs> out of depth we can give we can give scorecard patches yes we no, patched we score scar harstam this episode guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2.1 yeah patch 2.1 added the ability to lose to uh clem <laughs> <laughs> 3-1 <laughs> 
Okay, let me let me check the map order on this just to make sure we get that. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna start out with uh, Clem versus Hurstum. Oh my God, there's only three replays in this file. Mm? This kills me. Ooh, that's strange. Which one are we missing? We are we have missing the first game. We have Triton, World of Sleepers, Thunderbird. Ooh, so we're missing the last map. Which that is, the is the a decider heartbreaker. Map. Yeah. One hundred percent sure it's not just like file transfers or something. I can recheck the file. Somebody in Twitch chat confirm if anybody's downloaded it. Is it just missing? Disco Bloodbath, Clem versus Hearthstone? Where's my downloads folder? Hold on one second. We're going to recheck. Uh, d this was day three, right? Mm. So this one. Oh, they played on day two. Okay, day Sorry, two. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Round of 24. Clem versus Hearthstone, very top. Yeah. Wow, it right. actually only has three replays. Well, that's that's sad, but you know what? We'll we'll make do. We'll live. Wait, someone said they have all four, but I, I don't know. <laughs> do you, though? Do, do you? Do you, though? Well, jump into our Discord, and uh, we'd, love to to us? we'd love that to take it That would be amazing, yeah. Has my girlfriend started laddering yet? She played five games, I think. She won one game against a mech player. She had 11 bases to three... 11 base Protoss versus a 3 base Terran. Damn. 25 minute game. The legend. <laughs> <laughs> she would just make a million zealots and send it at her. Adam, I'm like, you're almost Grandmaster. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. It was wow. impressive. Congrats. That's, that's impressive. All right. Uh, I guess let's just jump into game one. We'll go through what we have. We have the first three games of Clem vs. Hearthstone. Sure. So, wait, the first one was Thunderbird. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thunderbird. Thunderbird. So the other day when I was playing ladder, I realized that some of these maps have like gas or high yield gas geysers that I didn't even know about. Yes. Oh wait, which one? Like not this one. There's other maps in the map pool that also oh, have them. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, but one it only has one. Like one. It has one high oh, yield yeah, gas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. One of the maps negative zero made, I believe he put that on. Why? Why do they do this? It's interesting. Is it, though? Because they put it in such a far base that it becomes kind of irrelevant, I feel. You know what I mean? But like, it if it was your third base, now it that's a huge, that's really interesting. Like, do I take the third base with one gas, or mm -hmm. do I take the third base with two? Like, now that's an interesting choice. Yeah, that is. But that when is. it's, like, the sixth base, it's like, well, shit, that's a really fucking interesting thing <laughs> that we have sixth <laughs> base has one gas, you know? Yeah. At that point, it actually doesn't matter anymore because you have so much, r so many resources at your disposal. Well, don't forget that we figured out with gold minerals, those had to be kind of in terrible locations to make them work, the gold bases. Yeah. Well, there was that one map. Do you remember there was one map with natural gold? It was amazing. My favorite map in the whole map pool. There was what actually one. There was a Are map. Are talking about Habitation Station? That no. was your natural. No, no, no. Was it Prion Terraces? I don't know. There was, there was a map. Gold base at your nat, gold base at your third. I shit you not. Why am I not remembering this? It was the best map in the map pool. Somebody in Twitch chat, you somebody knows. Can you what imagine you, you that? guys you are just crazy. Send everything down there. Oh, it was great. You take your nat at a gold base and then your third at a gold base. Hmm. Okay, so PVT. What do we got? This is uh Why don't they wa wall off on this map? Some people do, some people don't. I feel like most people don't though. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I think it's just a stylistic preference, like Do you hmm. need to wall that? You don't need to, but why not? Mm, Prime your economy's only a little had it better if you don't. The third, right? If it had it the third, it was because they patched it out of the net eventually. <laughs> Which would make sense because gold base is too oh. close. Oh, oh maybe this is why. Is it only one pylon? Oh. Ah, they built the second pylon there? I really like the second pylon on the low ground. I've been playing yeah. a lot of games. Yeah. I find that I'm just died of random things when I don't second no, pylon. No, it's... You have to be so on top of things. Like I actually talk about that a lot in GSL Cast about how if you don't make the second pile on the low ground, the thing is you have to you actually miss some minerals to do it. Yeah. Because it doesn't line up with the probe that's down there, and right. you can't send him back and then get him back in time for it. So it's a little bit annoying with build orders, but very rarely do I see someone who doesn't put it there deal with Hellion harass correctly. Yeah. It's really I saw hard. It, the other day we saw. Someone did it, and they did it beautifully, where they didn't put the pylon down there. I'm like, ooh, they're going to be in trouble for this. And then, like, their build incorporated something where they knew the Hellions were coming, right. and the probes just all went to the main right before they got there. So it was, like, very well done. But, yeah, that's... Put it at your natural. Yeah. 
No one's dying to the pushes at your natural because you have a wall there. That's not how the game works. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's already building buildings here, too, which would be annoying if he was getting tank pushed or something, but he already knows. All right, so what, what do we have here? Let's pause just for a second to get our heads into the game. Um, so it's a Stargate opener into third Nexus. Oh. Robo, a couple more gates, some Oracle harassment going on. Yeah, this seems kind of bad, though, that he's just wide open here. Like, he had, a, there was an oracle in his base earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this base is just wide open. And he's got two mines and a medevac. Uh, okay, well, let's see yeah, what happens. Yeah, nothing, this is going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, not as much as I thought. Yeah, it's still all right, though. Oh, good defense, good defense. Yeah, not bad. I like the Phoenix. The Phoenix That's is nice. Back. Well, I guess it's okay because the Phoenix is there. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Because it's not getting away, no matter what. Ooh. They walk. They tried to walk home. Maybe you well. un unloaded and walk home. That's funny. Immortal Forge, third base. What do you think of the Immortal? So I think that right now, if you are opening uh, with a very fast three bases mm -hmm. and you open with Stargate. I think the Immortal's smart. We've seen so many games with these uh, more aggressive stim pushes where Protoss is barely holding on. Yeah. Barely. Right. And I think the Immortal, it gives you that extra muscle. And, like, when I see people with only gateway units right now against Terran, I'm like, you're just... The meta's going to change this much and you're dead. Yeah. This much. And you're going to be like, why don't my build orders work? Am I just having a bad day? It's like, no. You're playing old builds against new builds and it's not going to stay that way. But I think the Immortal is very smart. If you revelate a Marine... And it gets in the medevac? You still see the medevac. Really? Yeah. You're 100% sure? I am super close to 100% sure. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's true or not. Well, I'm let's not sure. check. Oh, yeah. I guess we can check. Vision. Ah, you don't. Huh. There's Marines with Revelated in there. I know they are. That's so strange. Because <laughs> as soon as he unloads, he'll go get Vision again. Right? I guess so. Let's see. Well, he's going to unload at his base, right? Oh, wait. No, there was nothing worth Revelation in it. Oh, then he just somehow revelated only the cyclone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, never mind. But I think you actually do see the si the metadata. <coughs> Caster knowledge. Hee -hee. I mean, I'm a pro gamer. I don't know. Well, if you want to call me that. All right, code S twice. How would we know that? It's how would okay I to be how the fuck would I know? Things. There's all sorts of things I know that I can't see. As a words. Zerg player, how would I know if I put a Marine in a Medivac if I'm gonna? Well, you be call seen. yourself a random player now too. Well, random Grandmaster, but that's mean shit. Okay. What was that? That felt kind of uh, like he's still going. I'm amazed that this like got pushed back so hard. He's like continuing because mm. it feels like he should have known that this army was already bigger. Is he like desperate or what? Well, it seems like he's putting pressure on. Let's take a look. Right, he's got 50 SCVs and 74, 74 probes. probes. Yeah. No, he didn't lose extra workers since we last checked. I mean, w let's see what he has for buildings here. Uh, he has one eBay, no armory. So it seems like I mean he's. He he's didn't even start his, his plus one armor, huh? Uh, I mean, maybe he feels like he needs to do something. Maybe. It just feels a little weird because he should already be able to judge the fact that this army is too big to kill upright. The thing is, a lot of these pushes are deceptively powerful. The Terran ones, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they are. I feel like recently Terrans have just gotten better at them or something. <laughs> you know, you should just... Terran players should just start sending medevacs with nothing in them. Yeah. Because Protosses have to freak out. Gotta do oh, it. That was good. He's got to drop at the natural, too. Looks like he got more with that one. That's the third base. Oh, too late now, but... Yeah. I'm surprised he continues to push. Yeah, that's what I mean. It yeah. does feel a little surprising. That was a good immortal snipe, I guess. Like, even now, I feel like there's so much Protoss here. Yeah. This feels like a very good place for Hurstum. Because Hurstum is, like... Powering his tech up so hard here too. Some actually, I feel like there was a bit really of well for, for Clem. I'm not quite sure why though. <laughs> I guess the uh, uh, liberator felt like it lived for a really long time. We're on six gates right now. I mean, Arsenal's being as greedy as can be, right? He's getting Blink and two two and Colossus all at once. Mm. But it, it feels like he can do it. Does it not feel bad for Terran players that they they? Uh, when they get one engineering bay like this, their upgrades feel really slow if we mm -hmm. you're playing a double forge. Yeah. Like, it, it works okay, I guess, if they go one forge, but I feel like double forge is really common right now. Yeah. So they're just, like, behind really heavy. Like, I think this is 1-0 versus 1-1 one, one with 2-2 two, two almost done. 
I kind of feel like uh, Double Forge shouldn't be so popular right now. Why? Because uh, gateway units in general shouldn't be as powerful as they were before this patch because of stim timings. Sure. Because heavier bio forces should be able to come out and punish that. So I, I really, based on what the patch was, I thought for sure we were going to see more Robotech and slightly slower forges. Because it just it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, I guess. I feel like they still can get the <laughs> forges, though. You know mm. what I mean? Like it's not it like it seems like right now they can barely still fit in. Yeah, maybe it's possibly possible on this because on this map specifically we see it a this lot. This map specifically, yeah. uh, absolutely. I think that this it's is the map like where you can be game. most greedy by far. By Do far. you feel like Terran players aren't awarded the same amount of greed though on the based on the map? It feels like Protosses are, and I could be wrong here, so I'm totally open to be wrong. Mm -hmm. It feels like Protosses have the uh, ability to be more greedy on this map, whereas you flip the coin, it's almost like Terran doesn't really get that same opportunity, possibly because of War Prisms. I feel the Terran's way. more fragile. Yeah. In this matchup. That's for interesting. Sure. Yeah, like Protoss can do things like go Oracle into three bases real quick and then kind of hold on. Yeah. Currently. If Terran players were the I think same that Terrans are greed. still Im improving a little bit there. Oh my god, I have so many Alima League things up. I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> Crazy. It's okay. Could be by it. Because I also feel a similar, but, uh, similar way in Zerg. Again, well, Zerg can always be greedy to some extent, but I mean, like, the map specific greed doesn't really exist as much for, uh, for Zerg as well. It's like not really there because you can always be greedy if you want to uh, against Protoss specifically you can be greedy against other matchups more depending on the map but against Protoss it feels like if they want to kill you or all in you well maybe the like Zerg greed is is so different right so I think I think yeah. Zerg greed just has to do with knowing when you can drone yeah. so like you can kind of be greedy on any map if you know what you're doing whereas the whole Terran build order would have to change quite dramatically and yeah it feels like it's uh, a bit volatile because if the Protoss just happens to be like, you know what I'm going to do this time? I'm gonna always, Seven yeah, gateways! Exa exactly. This, this is what I feel like this is possible so good. on every map too though. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Warp Prism is a neat unit like that. You, the Warp and Mechanic in general. So yeah, it, it, I, I would definitely agree that Protoss gets a bit more leeway with choosing greedy builds. Although, I mean, I, guess Terran I think some of the best punish. Terrans mix in yeah. some stuff, like a quick three command and stuff, and we've definitely seen them get big advantages from that. But it feels like they're, for a lot of the Protoss greed, mm. it's not that punishable. Yeah, and it feels like the gambles are much much bigger gambles like on the Terran side, too. Like when you go for like a third base or something and they're just going to all in you or like, like they mm -hmm. have some build planned, it's, it doesn't even feel like it pays off a lot of the time, especially on a map like uh, Thunderbird where you can't really go for, a, let's say, a three base timing or something yeah. as Clem because their, fourth, or their th three bases will be basically the same time as yours. Um, it's interesting to think about. Yeah, some of it, it feels like Protoss can capitalize on the on the maps more than certain races can, other races can. Well, I think that a lot of Protoss stuff is extremely map specific, and that's a design thing, mm. you know, between Blink and War Prism and all that. Sure. Uh, you know, I mean, Terran does the same on certain maps too with like their tank positioning and stuff, but it sure. just feels different. I've been playing a lot of random, and <laughs> like every now and then I'll just go for like. An eight gate charge, uh, charge that archon all in, and they just can't hold it. Yeah. On yeah. like a lot of the maps, it just feels great. And then when I'm the Terran player, I'm really sad. It's a hero stalker. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of, kind of get, kind of agree with what you're saying. Look at that three three started for Hurstum here. I mean, it, everything is looking pretty strong for him overall. Like he just kind of held on. The counter harassment was good. Let's take a look. 70 probes, 62 SCVs. I feel like there's more play with like the minerals than, than it's utilized because we basically just see this as a wall in most matchups. And, like, yeah, it's, it's never weird. really. Occasionally you with. see someone bring so a couple rare. workers. Yeah, it's pretty rare, but I saw it in GSL the other day and I was like, oh, look at that. Isn't that neat? The one map I feel like there's a lot of play around, there's that one map where like there's. Uh, there's minerals between your bases, like your natural and your third. There's a lot of play there. Like you can literally mine a mine a mm. hole into their natural wall, basically, mm -hmm. and just all in them. Like I've been going 16, 16. I'll build two, take two drones and build an extractor, and then do the thing, mm -hmm. and just ling flood them. And they mm -hmm. can't do anything about it. I like it. It's disgusting. You hear that chat? I just gave you guys a GM build. <laughs> you all can you all can be grandmaster. <coughs> Wait. Okay. Does this not feel really, really bad for Hearthstone? What do we have? Oh, I guess there's some Archons Yeah, no, here. he's got plenty here. Oh, there's not enough Vikings, too. If, there was, if this was, like, nine Vikings, I think this would be really bad for Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah. But 
with the three Vikings, it's not like you can shoot these down fast enough. Like, mm. it's about to turn really bad for Clem. He's I also think. spread the damage a little bit. Mm. One Colossus being dead right now is much better than all of them being alive. Yeah. I mean, it's still kind of going okay. If it, if it was just a couple more Vikings, I think this is really one-sided for Clem, actually. Those Archons sucked up so much damage yeah. as well. I mean, look at, even with the three Vikings, it, it was so close. Like, he had to warp in Stalkers. And the probes fought. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Because it feels like Harston played a very nice game. So the fact that this attack that just came in actually could have been life-threatening if it was just a little bit stronger. Like a little bit, too. Just yeah. a tiny bit. It's interesting. This is also the one game um, Harston wins in the series, so yeah. I'm wondering if this, how much it this It feels spells. like the other ones, could the other ones be very, very one-sided? Is this like a because he did map victory? he kind of got away with everything he wanted right yeah yeah so I'm curious how it goes if like even one thing goes wrong for him in the series or yeah. in the game I feel like it'll just spiral into Clem's favor that's what, what do you think that's because like. it's just mechanics though or what is it specifically well I mean are you seeing anything mechanically poor about Harsom's play no. so far Which I'm not interesting yeah. now this see, inter this I mean, intrigues this me now because yeah. If you think about Clem versus Neeb, what, what does Neeb do to abuse Clem? Because basically we're saying... That's what we're here for. Yeah, we're <laughs> saying Harston <laughs> basically isn't playing wrong, and maybe it's a stylistic thing, mm -hmm. right? And it, it could be. Well, yeah, I, I just, I'm, not, I'm not sure about exactly what we're going to find there. I'm curious if the games are really long now, <laughs> or really... Because mm. maybe Neeb just plays out like a 20-minute game every single game. But even then, this is a 20-minute game. I don't know. Let's watch. This is going to be interesting. Mm. I'm already coming up with possibilities here. I'm kind of surprised he's even out there with that little podunk army. Well, he got the stormy boys. Well, as long as he doesn't no have MP. the storm yet. <laughs> oh, he doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now that's surprising. <laughs> yeah. I like that he's going into the prism speed, getting all his upgrades, even plasma, taking a fifth. Yeah. What was Sick. that? <laughs> and he gets it. Nice. Now, if you uh, drop these and put them in the medevac, so we won't be able to see <laughs> them. Ah, no, I, I think you do, actually. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> hmm. By the way, I do want to say that uh, Speed Prism, uh -huh. late game against Terran, is a must. Uh, I've been mentioning it in GSL a little bit as we see PVTs where it's like, I mean, I, more and more people are starting to get DT blink in the late game, which yeah. I think I'm like, yes, of course. Like, there's no reason not to have that in the late game. You might not even use it, but it's worth the upgrade because it can be very useful in all sorts of situations. Speed Prism is another thing, and it's something we talked about way back, I think, even in episode yeah, it was, one. It was a long time ago. The Speed Prism doubles the amount of defense you have to have, and then yeah. you can do stupid things like have two Speed yeah, Prisms. Yeah, we, we were talking about that, exactly. Yeah, where it's like, like it's totally this will get in. Minerals you see this turret ring? This is beautiful. Before Speed Prism, I look at that, I'm like, good job, Clem. You're keeping Prisms <laughs> out of your base. Right now with Speed, I'm like, Clem, Close. you need more. <laughs> yeah. We need a Viking over here, too. <laughs> right. Yeah, we talked a lot about it. We're, like, we're just patrolling a Cyclone here. It's just like a million times better. Your first Cyclone? Hell yeah. And we're like praising Maru, and then Maru moves his Cyclone immediately after. We're like, mm -hmm. never mind. <laughs> All right. So does this turret... Oh. Is that turret in range? Uh, he just flew in the Prism. Looks like he only got a single Zealot out. I think he went up at an angle, though. Yeah, yeah you good. know what? That is in range. Yeah. That's the bottom of the Let's map right back. there. I think he did tilt it up, but I think it might just barely be in range. Well, of the like, bottom. that's a big difference, right? Because that's two turrets, basically, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh. but he's he's actually fine so close right there. Yeah, I think if it's here, it's it's definitely out of range, if you can put it here. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Mm. By the way, everyone's loving that new EMP. Yeah. That's being gotten so quickly in a lot of these games now. It feels kind of weird how much uh, praise it's getting because you could It doesn't feel like it makes a huge difference. I mean, it does. It def definitely does. But, like, let's say late game when we have, like, a couple more ghosts, isn't kind of the same thing? Mm. Like, if you have three ghosts, <laughs> like, you can still blank at the whole army. Yeah, but doing it at a bigger range and stuff. And oh, yeah, the range, I guess, is a big deal. I yeah. feel like I'm seeing ghosts uh, come into play oh, the range is like huge. more what quickly and more regularly than before. Did it range get an upgrade? Well, just because it's a bigger yeah, radius, right, right. It, it technically it hits further away. So that's what I'm talking about. 
I guess that's actually a bigger deal than the fact that it's a bigger radius. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about, like, as a spectator, mm-hmm. is it is it really interesting to watch Storm EMP battles? No, no. It, it feels I, kind of not that interesting to me, but I don't know why. Well, the spellcasters, there's, like, a big problem with spellcasters, I think, in general in, in StarCraft Two because smart cast is too smart. Well, it's Bungle, I for think example, I've talked about this in the past. Feels kind of fun to watch, but I feel like it's well mostly the other person being punished, like fungal corrosive bio combo or something. Like that was interesting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Fungal is fun to watch. Yeah, it's fun to watch people get punished. I Bungle like it. is fun to watch. Maybe it's because I'm a Zerg player, actually. All right. Well, In Depth has I had a great run <laughs> of 20 episodes. I don't like Storm. Okay, Storm is boring. EMP is boring. But Fungal, no, that's an interesting Dude, stuff. Dude, Fungal... E- <laughs> okay, so when we start seeing... Like, if there's, like, one Fungal or something, you have, like, <laughs> one Infestor, that can be a very interesting and cool thing. Mm. Walking around with 20 Infestors in the late game is the stupidest thing, and it has been since <laughs> Wings of Liberty. <laughs> right? Yeah. And the thing is, you see that with <laughs> High Templars as well, where it's like, oh, look at how many High Templars he has. Sure. <laughs> the storms all go off, right? <laughs> right. Okay. The ghost stuff, most of it doesn't really... It, it, it's not as bad with ghosts. When, yeah, when they had snipe, it was. When they had when they had the actual snipe spell, that yeah. was ridiculous. That was maybe the most ridiculous that we've seen in 2016. Oh, yeah, like back... Yeah. Where, yeah. like, an ultra would walk and just in the range just immediately explode. Yeah. Also, they could do some weird shift stuff where they're like shifting and like sniping yeah, entire yeah. armies. That was insane. Um, but uh, okay, so how do we make it more intriguing? Because it doesn't. F- I I believe I made this argument a long time ago that they should actually take smart casting off of spellcasters in StarCraft Two. Smart casting where you group all of them together and yeah, the fact that you can take all your high templars and they're all in a group and you hit T and you one click time, and then it only and takes then one. one of them, the closest one, storms. Right. So you can just be like. Whereas if you take away smart casting and you do that, all of them will cast at once, so it's a fucking huge waste. Because that actually makes Psy Storms an exciting thing. If you look at like StarCraft One Psy Storms, they're actually the Psy Storm in StarCraft One is ridiculous. It's like bigger and it does yeah. more damage and stuff. But like, you can't just cast them all at once. You actually have to be quick and click it. Yeah. And the same would go for fungals. You can't just have twenty infestors sitting there waiting to oh, fungal the yeah. entire army when it comes into range. You have to actually click them and then click what you want them to cast. So I think that that would make it much more interesting. Interesting. I don't know if I, I agree 100, percent but I I, gr- I agree with where you're going with it. Cause I still feel like in the core, like if you're good enough, it's kind of sim. It's a kind of a similar thing still. It's not because the if you have like the thing is you have lots of hotkeys, so people could make hotkey schemes, like put high templars on four different hotkeys and like nail them out like that. But that's like that in in and of itself takes time. Why that's you really just hard have to them set all up. Click T. I guess you, that takes so much longer, right? If you have to click each one individually, yeah. it takes so much longer. That's why it's really beautiful to see. Uh, like, dude, have you seen the clip of Jong B's Psy Storms against Nada in StarCraft One? Maybe no. It's the most epic Psy Storms that ever happened in StarCraft One, and it's like Jong B, who is basically the best PVT player for the first mm. eighteen years of the game before Snow came up. Just he got like six storms off at almost exactly the same time and it's just this mind-boggling moment whereas in the yeah, next yeah, battle we'll see sure, that sure, sure. okay and it does it doesn't have to be harsh it can be a diamond guy too and he'll get it right, and right so right. it's kind of no, like it's true it's true oh uh, you just blanketed the entire terran army in. so that's interesting to think about do you think that there would be push i wonder how the pushback would be because it's not friendly to noobs and I feel like that's where we're going with StarCraft. Uh, to too. be honest, the splash damage dealing damage to the noob army is not friendly to noobs either. So that's true. I that's think it's true. <laughs> You're right. Just <laughs> it it would make spellcasters a lot. Do we do it with disruptors lot. too? Where you press V and all of them shoot up? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, no, <laughs> everything. Perfect, Nothing yeah. should be smart cast. We should just get rid of the smart casting bullshit. Okay, what would you that can still the, move your army what around. Would affect that, what would that affect the most? Would it be storm? I think that that would Fungal single-handedly would actually that might be make the Terrans have a big win rate against Protoss, and things would have to be fixed balance-wise again, because Possible. everything is based off of the ridiculousness of Psy Storm, and the Terrans w- Terrans would go into the winningest thing because you wouldn't would be able to be fungal a, their Vikings. Yeah, so that might easily. be a massive infestor nerf actually. Uh, when we're oh, it would be a massive are, infestor nerf. How would you infest a Terran? You 
kind of couldn't. Yeah, you'd have to be quick with your fingers instead of pull down no, the fucking bind. It would actually be impossible. Let's be real here. Like you, if you one infester, four infester. Like if you do this back and forth, like I don't think they would ever be used infester turn. No, no even if you're really fast. They all shoot at once, so you can. Oh it's wait, fine. no, yeah, you're right. It yeah. would work. You could just hawk him all together still. Yeah. It would only be bad for fungal. Actually, it might even be more broken because then you could just literally infest a turn entire army. People do that already. It's true. People do that already. No, they've got their stupid keybinds down. 0.1 <laughs> milliseconds, and all the infested Terrans are out. Who cares? <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I would consider it if I was a balanced designer. Is that what they're called? Huh? Are they called balanced designers? Uh, I guess so. That would be interesting. Dude, I'm telling you, if you took out the, the smart cast from they spellcasters, the game would be better. They would actually have to rebalance the game. Yes, it would need some rebalancing. Do you think the Warp Prism is a good or bad mechanic for StarCraft 2? Yeah, that's a good question. So I actually think the game would be better without it. For both, for everybody. Yeah, the thing is the whole game would again have to be rebalanced around that. I, yeah. I had I had a lot of statements about that, about the century in the very beginning. Hey, Ari. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, excellent. Three packages. <laughs> um, okay, what were we talking about? Uh, uh, oh yeah. The, so it, at the beginning of StarCraft Two, I was saying the Sentry should go out, but that would force a, a redesign of everything because everything Protoss was based off of Sentry early on. Uh, obviously, people have gotten better at dealing with that, but actually, I think the Sentry's in a good spot now. But in the beginning, it, yeah, it's, it in, felt a, it's so in a stupid. fine spot now. But a lot of the game has revolved around the evolution of the Sentry, which is so interesting too. It. Like they literally balance the whole game around one unit, like very, essentially. Very often times we've seen that. It feels like that should not ever be the case. That you're just balancing around one core unit, like you're taking the whole game and revolving it around a unit that can essentially m edit the map. Yeah, map editor robot. Doesn't it feel a little weird that you would ever do that instead of just like taking it out or mm. making it more of a balanced well? What unit? every everything every race always has the most powerful unit that the you're kind of falling on. Should be that <laughs> like just feels a little weird. Yeah, it's like the kinda basically silly. the first or second unit you build. Right, right now it's in a really weird spot because you don't mass them. You make them enough to not die, but you also use them for scouting fluently, like a fluent scout. It's it's just a weird unit in general. Yeah, I think the sentry's cool now. Yeah. It wasn't though for a long time. <laughs> and yeah. maybe we'll see other units go that way, but I just don't like the the aspect of the prism in, in general like defending it feels really annoying, right? Because like you can never move out cuz there's always a risk that you're just going to die. Mm. At the same time they can be really defensive and also aggressive at the same time with the prism, right? So I I get punished if I attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just in oh. general, the mechanics of if a you got rid of the prism, you'd have to actually give more power to Protoss. Yeah, of course. I'm not saying just yeah, but, but I feel the like the thing is, I think most people agree with that sentiment. It just feels bad when you get punished for <laughs> trying to abuse them because yeah, they have a prism, mm -hmm. and also it's really hard to just know if there's a prism out because I don't know. Protosses sometimes leave them at home and shit. They're just idiots sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just curious if that would make the game more fun or not. I'm trying to think of what what makes the game fun. I think people would really enjoy the game more if the splash damage, like, look, see yeah. these storms coming out instantly as you run? Actually, it's true, too, because you can actually have your whole army in a hockey, and it automatically will go to Templar, and it'll automatically mm -hmm. select the highest one, and there's just a lot of things that would be a lot harder. You're right. I don't feel much when a storm goes off in StarCraft 2. No. You're right. You just expect the storms to hit. Yeah. That's true, too. Like, even when you when you take an engagement as a Terran player, you just expect them to hit your army with storms and dodge the where they're going to storm it, right? Yeah. But I think I don't think we'll ever see any of these changes that we're talking about. No, it's just interesting to talk about them. Yeah. Well, it's Speaking just... Speaking of this game, how does... How does Harston win it? It feels like right now. Clemson I think he has four robos right now, or three robos. Three robos. That's probably a part of it. It still feels really good for Clem, mm. especially with the economy. Like, yeah, no, he's Clem is playing a, a really strong game. I feel like we can how kind it of opened, see it seemed like it was very Harston favored. And right now, I feel like it's Clem favored too. He's, he's still he's still down upgrades as well. <laughs> yeah, does he have three? Is he only one engineering bay up to two two? 
No, he has a second one. Oh, he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I was going to say, that's a, that's just impressive. Yeah. Is he playing Protoss? He's on top of things. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we're 17 minutes in. It's technically viable. Okay. So Fusion Core, I'm assuming that's for Lib Range is. I almost feel like we have to see a big mistake from Clem for the game to be uh, one from Hearthstone. Do you think so? I, I don't. Feel I, like I feel like Hearthstone has enough going on that as the game goes longer, he should be feeling fine. Really? Yeah. I actually feel the opposite. I feel like as the game goes on longer, it's better for Clem. Well, I, I do see that Clem is taking lots of bases. Like, he's playing a very nice game. Mm. But right now I'm looking at Hearthstone, right? Let's take a look at the upgrades. He's 3-3, three, three, and he's getting plasma shields, right? He's already got prism speed. He's got yeah. He's got basically all the upgrades that he needs for this game. He's got three Robos right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we're having some of these smaller, scrappy battles, mm -hmm. which those can favor Terran a little bit more, I think. Right. But as this game just kind of continues, Hurston is just going to have so much power. Because like, of 3-3? Three, three? Well, he's already got his upgrades, and his army is just going to grow in strength. Yeah, like, I guess. I just feel like once we get to a point with Clem... When we also have three three, and then mm -hmm. we kind of negate all the advantages that Hearthstone has. I don't know. I mean, it's it's possible. He does like have he's three starports. He's so also I mean getting that's live something. range. He's getting plus yeah. three, yeah. three starports. He's got more uh, bases on the way. I mean, he's. But I, I think the way Hearthstone's playing this uh, is really for much longer mm. games. Like he wants to go later into this. You think Clem doesn't? I gotta check on something real quick. I'll be right back. Sure. Wait, I'm curious, Marine Lord. You agree with Artosis? Does he? Yeah, you can fight Artosis' oh, position while he's gone. Why does this not look good for Clem? I'm curious, Marine Lord. I'll, I'll state your opinion if you want to be a part of this episode. I'm kind of curious because it doesn't feel bad for Clem going on longer. I feel like all of um, all of Hearthstone's power is already here, right? So the longer the game goes on, it feels like Clem has more opportunity to kind of come back. Say almost even. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I could agree with that, I think. I just feel like as the game goes on longer, it's not worse for Clem. Maybe even better. Value 3-3 three, three for Protoss is 40 <laughs> supply right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. But EMP. He's got the EMP. Right? Arsene has a lot of supply to grow into, though. So does so does m Clem. What? Clem has a lot of army supply to grow into. He's got a ton of production. Also... He's got a ton of bases. Yeah, he's yeah. That's totally viable for Clem as well. Mass lives. Mass lives is good. He doesn't have um, Tempest, right? Yeah, he's mass lib is fine. Let's see Archon splash. Archons are about to get fucked on if there's any ghosts in here. I don't know if there are. It doesn't look like there are actually. See somebody in chat understands. Yeah, there's no ghosts here. I mean, they're all over here for some reason. Honestly, I'm not. If this wasn't two two, if this was three three versus three three, I think this army fucks on this army. Bunch of stalkers. Mass lib is losing value right now, though. You like mass libs when you usually have an aggressive position on the map, but right now he most like likely have to sit back at home because of the three three threat. That's okay, true. Sorry about that. Uh, what? Okay, so what is Marine Lord agreeing with? Marine me Lord on? says that. Because Hearthstone is 3-3, it's basically 40 more supply. <laughs> and he said that he thinks the game is not necessarily... Like, it's more of an even game right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and he also he said that uh, Mass Lives is losing value right now. You like Mass Lives when you have an aggressive position on the map, usually. But now he has to defend because he's 3-3 three, three threat. So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Marine Lord, very smart player, knows what he's talking about. The way... The way that I kind of look at it mm -hmm. is, I think in PVT, it reminds me of uh, it's it's a matchup in which uh, if the Terran has a little bit higher supply, uh, it's they're even. Whereas mm -hmm. if the supply is equal, I feel like the Protoss is leading. Mm -hmm. uh, and when with his upgrades already done and all of his tech added on Harsum, I'm talking about here with the three Robos already up. Like I mm -hmm. I love seeing something like a third Robo uh, because it basically tells you that. As the game progresses and the spies get higher, his army is going to scale perfectly. Like he is yeah. going to have a ridiculous. Well, I feel like combating army. that with triple starport as well. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not at all opposed to the starports. Like, I think you, you kind of have to. What was that? 
you have to do them. I don't know, but we're still could have been anything. Still, it's fine. Um, but yeah, anyways, I that's that's kind of how I think about the situation. Yeah, it's like he's keeping pressure on. That's nice, I think. Like Clem is playing very well, but yeah. thing is, all these situations, like I think that was a little bit over extension from Harsom. I feel oh. like all all Harsom needs to do is battle, pull back, battle, pull now back, battle, pull back, and keep making units. Ah, uh, okay. This feels like an overextension from Clem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I would say we decisive advantage for Harston. Mm. But up until that, and it wasn't. Point, but it wasn't that much to turn from what we were seeing into that because you know well, he's way across the map. His units are getting bruised and everything. He doesn't have his three three. It's yeah. I'm just. I mean, yeah. I guess if he takes a defensive position, I don't necessarily like it either. So. Just interesting. Well, yeah, you don't. I don't think you want to just sit back mm. and defend because that just lets Protoss run you ragged around the map. But yeah, I, I don't know. It just felt like the well. If like if we get the plus three out from, I think with how much Harson was able to do early on without being punished, mm -hmm. that's really where the game went towards him. And Clem kept pressure on to try to negate some of that, and it just didn't quite work out. The thing is. A lot of times when Terrans are putting pressure on, it looks good for a long time before they lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like now we don't really have anything for the Colossi. Plus it's triple robo, like you are saying, so. <laughs> yeah. He can have just kind of getting... endless quality units. Do you think that if this was 3-3, that the game would be different? Like, of all these fights since, let's say, like here where we got punished, if it was 3-3 for Clem? I mean, two upgrades are pretty huge, right? That's like a big, big difference. Kind of curious because I feel like still most of the damage is and like the storm yeah. slash colossi. Don't forget that uh, generally Terran upgrades scale better than Protoss upgrades in a lot of ways. I guess I, I should clarify, right? Like attack upgrades for uh, Protoss scale pretty well, but you know you have to plasma and, and armor separately. And right. Yeah, I mean at this point, there's no question. Mm -hmm. This army is just massive. So it it. it what? To to kind of make uh, talk about like what happened in this game, it feels to me like Harson played as uh, greedily as he really could. Yeah. Asterisk GG. Is that a bad manner move? Have we decided on that one? Uh, it felt like it was kind of a uh, overall somewhat greedy play for uh, good on good on Thunderbird. Obviously, mm -hmm. he was able to stay alive through the whole thing. Ooh, new tier unlocked. <laughs> All right. Um. Let's see what map two is. But it felt like Clem was playing very well. Clem looks scary. Yeah. I think if I was Hearthstone, I'd be very worried for the series. Because <laughs> it did feel like there was a huge fight for this game, even though he got away with so much in the beginning. Mm. Like I said, it felt like even if, if Clem had a little bit of a foothold at some point, he would just roll over Hearthstone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I got a little bit of that feeling as well. So we'll see. There's 14 minutes. This is kind of where I would expect, you know, a snowballing Terran to kill you. Sure. Assuming it's not at the very beginning of the game. Well, it's 14 minutes, so definitely not. Which could kind of explain why Neeb wouldn't lose to Clem, right? Because if you don't give him that foothold at all, you kind of just roll out. You can roll him. It's possible. Maybe. Yeah, no, that's like a... We just saw, saw Harstem do it. But if, if it's Neeb, too, it's possible that he hits that even even harder. Because mm. he... I do felt like I felt like Clem took uh, multiple engagements that were really good. He He did damage at certain points where he might not have... If it was Neeb. Yeah, well, I curious. feel like Clem several times pushed a little bit too heavily, but maybe he was looking for that damage. Looks I think 1G is not BM, and Artosis thinks it's very BM. This is something we disagree with on a fundamental level. <laughs> yes, on a fundamental level. Uh, Marine Lord saying uh, the only bad thing about Harsom's position in that he was potentially about to face the uh, range and didn't have a Stargate transition started. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but since he had 3 3, he knew he could get out and pressure. Which is true. Because yeah. if you think about it, even if uh, Clem sieged up, let's say, that base, like he sieged up his libs and he was like in a stronghold, mm -hmm. Harson would just go somewhere else yeah. and force you to unsiege well, and come, come Colossus to him. Colossus stalker armies, I think, are the natural first counter to liberator-based armies because you just kind of run around. This is, you know, anytime I see a Terran fighting against like a pure gateway army and they aren't going uh, liberators, I get very confused. I feel like that's a that's a smart move. And then... Whenever I see someone going Liberators and the Colossus player mm -hmm. is not on the map, I'm like, oh, no, this is yeah. 
Like, this yeah, is yeah, how yeah. you play is you get your army out there and you run around and make right. him siege and re-siege and unsiege and de-siege and... I you mean, know. speaking with what Marine Lord was saying, like, when you have libs and you're on the map, it feels like you're so much better. Like, once you start sieging up positions where the Protoss needs to, like, yes, defend, yes. now you're in a really bad spot. But if you're trying to play more defensively, like, you want to siege mm. Protoss with Liberators or sit completely defensively, but, like, there's too many bases yeah. at that point in the game. So yeah. Harsom can just dominate, in in my opinion. Like, Right. So I see why he's kind of keeping that pressure on. I see. Well, I agree with Marine Lord sentiment about the 1G. That's that's exactly it. Because if you're BM, you just don't GG. Just so fast that you can't type two GGs. Yeah, like you just type GG, enter, and then what about one Zerg G players that do it? Because we know their repeat rates are off the scales. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain that one to me, Marine Lord? It's and no regret. It's the same. You just I don't know. They press it once. You can. I, I oh, can. Oh wait, wait. But I tend to one G more often when I'm mad. That's to just be honest, because you're trying Lord. to leave the game quick, though. No. Yes. No. Yes. Listen, you guys he are... He doesn't type 1G on purpose. Listen, you fleshy he robots, <laughs> he okay? Your he emotions are there, and you're typing 1G because you think to yourself, well, no, that's not a good you game. It's you don't just, just a game. Hit. No, because then fuck that guy. You know? Like, you don't type anything then. I'm 100% right on you this. You don't type 1G, and you're like, ah, that guy, that'll show him. Fuck well, that guy. Well, it's somewhat defensible, like you're doing. You're what? like, no, it's not bad, man. I just fast. It's like, okay... Mr. Reap. You think rate. anybody Mr. gives a shit? Mr. $200 mechanical Marine, keyboard. You think anyone's like, oh, Marine Lord didn't GG this game. He's a bad-mannered man. Like, And then if Marine Lord's like, oh, I was someone, just playing quickly. Or whatever. If you're playing like, against someone that you know and they don't GG, that, that yeah, so you want to type a G in at least. There's a lot of people that are just like, like we've had people in the house like sitting across from each other, and they just will leave without GGs and like BBM to each other, you know? Like, it just happens. Some people Quality. are just like, fuck that guy, you know <laughs> what I mean? Even in the house. Sash... Sasha is a, a proponent of this, which so doesn't GG. Because she doesn't respect him. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't GG a lot of the time. Yeah. But th that's very different than typing 1G. If she types 1G, she means to GG. Because, like I said, she's totally down for not GGing at all. Yeah. And me yeah. too. So, well, it's the same with me. Yeah. Like, if I type 1G, it means GG. Because I, like I, I would just not GG you if I didn't want to. I feel like I've already proven my point on this. Like, no. <laughs> I think I'm just right, and there's nothing else to it. No. <laughs> it's interesting that you think that, though. Well, the fact that you're trying to like be like, oh, Marine Lord agrees with me, and he's like, well, actually, to be honest, I Marine am Lord more does angry. agree with me. He does agree with but you. But he also says he's more angry when he's when he won G's. He's more likely to yeah, one G's. Yeah, because he's, he's typing angry. quick. No. You guys are so it's quick. He's trying to leave the game 300 quick. 300 APM. How quickly are you leaving the game? Like instantly. Uh, what's your I can if rate if we wanted to leave right now, I could leave Mr. in like less I than a second. Mr. I throw out Infested Terrans in a half second. What is your repeat rate? Oh, a DT Shrine. What are we looking at here? What is this build? First off, I don't what make Infestors. I? I don't know who you think I am. And second yeah, that's off. that's true. Yeah, I'm this sorry is interesting. That. That's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hold it. Oh, yeah, no. I know the Reaper Jump here, yeah. Okay, so he's, he's kind of prepped for Reaper Jump. A Reaper that just jumps, runs in, can get in, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I just, just want to say I'm like 99% I'm 99% sure. sure, too. That so it just barely gets in there. If that Reaper did go in. But then again, we just see a Twilight. Probably he would start an upgrade on it, so it doesn't look suspicious. Yeah. yeah. It's not enough to tell you fully, but I think at that point you're already sus. Actually, didn't we s did we see Neeb do DTs? This I think I watched Neeb do DTs before I fell asleep, too. Maybe. Which is interesting. Maybe it'll be against Clem. I think it was versus Time, actually. What? This is interesting. <laughs> Just got to get a little bit closer. Yeah. That's too far. Oh, with how there. slowly they warp in, why not? How many gateways do you have? Two? Yeah. Three. No, two. Two DTs. Yeah, this is not bad. What an interesting thing to do in game two. I like it, especially after the win. Yeah. Like like I said, we kind of felt like it was a little bit of a shaky win. I imagine Harston probably felt the same way. <laughs> like, he felt like probably Clem is a really strong player. He started an upgrade. It's already too late. Hold on, hold on. I want to see what he's looking at. Okay, wait. Sure. Okay, I was looking at the date taste. <laughs> Damn. Okay, wait, out of curiosity, don't you think this is just the ballsiest move ever? Like, it's po totally possible that he saved scans for both both command centers, no? Uh, well, I mean... He, he actually did, he did, so... He did, Yeah. It's... I it's guess you guys feel like you to need it. to there's do this, too, though, right? Maybe? 
Like it's worth the risk in case you here's didn't. here's a question. Mm. Um now I recall that at one point I actually don't know the answer to this. Mm -hmm. I recall at one point you could see through fog of war of mules dropping. Is that still the case? What? Yeah. There was some way to do that Maybe. before. Do you know what I mean? Where like through fog of war you could like go over here, put your screen there and like see some flicker of a mule or something like that. I don't think so. Okay. That would be crazy. Yeah, because I was going to say you should try to time that out. but You know, there was a clip on Reddit that if you select a battlecruiser before it teleports, you can see where it teleports to. Like if you click on it as the enemy. Oh. Huh. Which is interesting. That's cool. I don't know how, I, how uh, you know, how repeatable that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is going to get punished because... Yeah, he's he's in so much trouble right here. This is really bad. Wait, okay, let's go back. I'm kind of curious if Clem responded by... I'm surprised by he's making blink. Wait, Marine Lord, is it normal to just save scans at certain periods of the game if you're sus? I feel like it is, right? So he probably got a little bit suspicious and just saved scans. Because he, scan he saw the Twilight. Yeah. Oh, wait, when did he see that? Did he see it at the very beginning? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, well, he saw it when it was in construction. So. But the thing is, you can just think that this is blank. Right? Yeah, totally. It but looks it's, like it's totally worth just saving scans, right? To not just die. Hartum mm. is loving DT since two months ago. Mm. Yeah, so like Clem just saves because he could scan, he could meal right now if he wanted to, but he's not, which is great. I mean, that's you know something you should do if you don't want to just die. Actually, I. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I was thinking of uh, there was a weird uh. In maybe two WCS stops ago, Harson was doing it like a glaive, a macro glaive opener that had DT tech in it or something. It was very weird. PVC. You saw the DT. Look at that. Look at how fast he is. That's incredible. He sees a DT here right now. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That is impressive. Sees the other DT. So now you feel like a million bucks. Now the DT recovery plan for Protoss. Uh, right? Charge Archon maybe. Well, I think it's. I think blink. you go Immortal and Charge personally. Yeah, I like Charge. I feel like Blink is really hard. I to think if you don't make any Immortals, you just die. Seven K scan, <laughs> French scan. <laughs> what is a French scan? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I guess yeah. If you just scan here, you could have killed both. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he baited it to go over here. It's like, oh, I've got this, you know, mm. blind spot. Well, he did. He Harstam did move them uh, far apart. Yeah, I bet if the scan was here. You don't even send it in. So, you know. <coughs> okay, here's, so blink. Here's my question. How in the world are you going to stay defend? alive against yeah. the first attack that comes? I, I agree. That's Your army is so damn weak right now. Like, he's going to lose his third, right? As mm. soon as as soon as soon Clem moves out. That's my sentiment, too. Especially with Blink, it feels even harder to defend. Yeah. Because Blink is great when you're, like, uh, like trotting this, the map. but This prism has the weight of the world on its shoulders <laughs> right now. <laughs> that prism has to do everything yes, ever. It's true. Everything short of winning the game by itself it has to do. Yeah, it does. Look, Look at this, this stim and plus nice one yeah, finishing. The scout. two medevacs are going to boost. Oh, my God. There's no way. Yeah, here it comes. There's no way. Well, it's a He's going to drop a D team here. We'll see if uh, you watch. Clem will, like, turn around <laughs> with his whole army or something. <laughs> he just picked up two mines, too. Yeah. I mean, and then two boosts later, he's at the third base with uh, an army that can't be stopped. He's okay, supply blocked this. right now. If he turns this army around, that would be devastating. But there's no way you would no, ever do that. No, there's no way yeah. you would ever do that. Like, this is, I mean, that's... It's annoying, but yeah. it's not. I'm actually amazed that this game doesn't just end here. Yeah. How does it not just end? Yeah, that's a great question. He must warp in DTs. And there's, there's like no scans, scans left. left. <laughs> yeah. There's a DT. Yeah. Actually, this is a little bit of a mistake. Wow. Because he's, he's been stimming so much. I think Stim's actually done more damage to him than Harstam <laughs> did. Harstam's army. That was, yeah. And also, now that you think about it, where's the third CC, right? There's no third. And there's three bases for Harstam. This didn't feel right to me, though. Like It didn't. It feels like he should have just died. Like, should he have rallied more units? It really feels like the third shouldn't be alive. But he made the two batteries. He already had a defensive battery here from before. His army was just so garbage. Like, what? Let's go back and look at the actual fight. French scan is al Dante on point. Dante? Is that French? Probably. Where He's it's French. It so. scans where we need to be, but we suck at StarCraft, but we're good at scanning. <laughs> 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 All right, let's look at this actual battle, right? 
This army looks so it's so weak, so garbage next to this. Shield batteries are good, but they're not that. Could good. you just Come go on. for the throat too? It's possible. I guess the DT's uh, constant DT weapons. Okay, scary. let's see. What if he just boosted this medevac in, like, and dropped the mines on top? That was a nice blink. Like this feel, this whole thing right now feels like a big mistake. Cause he just scanned like or stim like three times. Like at yeah, this point I think now he maybe the pullback was weird. The pullback to go into the natural when like there was even with the shield batteries, this this army's not gonna stop you. His <laughs> scans are to the tooth. <laughs> nice guys. Alright. And now I actually huh. kinda like Karstim's position. I don't I still don't oh, know. Oh wait, what's about in the main? It. I still don't know about it. Oh. oh yeah, you got a few probes that that's kinda nice, I guess. I mean that's also possibly what influenced him doing this though too. Mm. Yeah, because uh, you, as a Terran player, sometimes you're like, I'm going to feint to push and drop at the same time. And then you, you're set with that. Like, So even if you see something you possibly kill, you're like, I'm going to back up and drop at the same time or whatever. Because mm -hmm. <coughs> it didn't, yeah. I mean, at this point, obviously, he can't actually fight, but he stimmed yeah. so many times. That's easy on position. Oh, that Cute. is so good. <laughs> This game seems highly non-replicable by yeah, Hurston. I agree. Like, <laughs> the I DT going that wrong and then getting into a regular position. game seems very... Yeah. Even now, I feel like uh, uh, Clem's trading so well. Mm. His it's medevac so count is really growing and everything. It's so interesting about Blink. I really, I'm really interested about Blink. It just feels like charge would be better even now, as like a defensive and aggressive unit or yeah. a spell. It's just better, like when you're when you don't have very much. I think when you're behind, you skip things like stalkers and blink more often, or you should, in my opinion. Ooh. Oof. Wow. That yeah, the liberator ad is perfect. This is what we were talking about just slightly before. Yeah. You're no, playing yeah, against this is gateway armies and stuff, spot. you just make liberators. Imagine trying to blink your stalkers up to this, up this yeah, too. Yeah, it's never, yeah. ever, ever going to happen. The this thing is, is he, he just he doesn't really have the power to fight through this. Yeah. Immortals are so weak, too. It feels like when uh, when they're by themselves. So, like, if this... Or even, like, if you focus them down, they die actually so quickly. It's one of the most amazing things ever. If you're, uh, mm. like, as a off-racer, watching immortals just explode like that, I'm like, whoa. Mm. It's unrecordable. Replicatable <laughs> with Zerg. <laughs> Unless I take their immortals or bile them or something. Or I guess if I have a million roaches, it also works. Yeah, not really. Not really, yeah. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same, exactly. How is Clem losing this game? What? He's not losing this game. Do you see the army supply? Yeah, Lu no, Luca he's, he's doing supply. just fine. I feel like this could have been more Clem sided, but. Yeah. The only thing Harson has going for him is this. And now he shot it. And now yeah. he has to turn around. <laughs> now he's going to lose all his shit while he leaves, too. Not enough sentries for the I'm kind of surprised he walked up there, to be honest. Oh. Kind of a weird recall, it felt like. but Yeah. I mean, don't think that that was necessarily needed. Maybe he thought a drop was about to hit or something. I think he thought that uh, Clem was about to just jump on his army, too. It's better to recall sooner, because if you recall while he's jumping on you, you're mm. in really big trouble. Yeah, that is true. He used up most of his force field energy and everything. The huh. soup lie doesn't lie, exactly. Yeah, this is... Oh, it can lie. I feel... Like, well, there's, there's <laughs> roaches, some, there's yeah. Some, yeah, roaches. Uh, there's units that don't scale with every race. <laughs> <laughs> that was an inter interesting disruptor. Yeah, I like the disruptor, though. I think, again, it's one of those nice comeback type of units. I like the disruptor's place right now because it feels like uh, you just mix them in and they're just really good because you can't stim up on an army, mm. especially Colossus. Like stimming up on Colossus is like the most depressing thing. If I have three Marauders and I see a Colossus, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I can take that. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're just like Mario then. Oof. Okay, wow. Yeah, see, watch these Immortals die. Look at this, guys. Oh, no, just kidding. He's killing a Colossus. Dead yeah. Immortal, dead yeah, well, you ignored the shield. I love Look it. Look at they just fucking die. Everything dies, and he leaves. And now he's got a bigger army at home. Oh, doesn't even leave. He doesn't mm. even have to. 
you know, it, this game is like, I feel like this game doesn't count on either side. Yeah, I agree. It's actually not a very good game for comparison because I yeah. know that there's going to be nothing like this for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, the first it's a game DT really game good. where the DT goes wrong and then there's some interesting decisions, I guess. But I don't feel like there is a ton to learn at all from this game. Yeah. The first game was really good to judge, I think, skill from both players. Yeah. And it, the thing is, I actually like that Harsim has mixed in a DT build. Like you said, you know, it's oh game yeah, it's two, he, already, he won it's game one. Game. Um, I don't think we need to look at this one anymore. Uh, but... Yeah, so in the thing is, I think DT strats can be good in tournaments as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to, like, overcommit to saying that they're good in tournaments, but, like, anything uh, that your opponent can make more mistakes against can be strong. It kind of matters who you're playing against as well. If someone's completely 100% focused in, they're going to catch the DTs uh, a little bit more often than they would in, like, a ladder practice game. Mm -hmm. But people play less safe sometimes as well. The way I think, like to think about it is any any strategy that allows you to possibly dictate the pace of the game in a tournament is always a good thing. Yeah. Because you you can catch your opponents in l situations that they're less familiar with, where you should be in theory more familiar with because you're the one dictating it. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, people may know I thirteen twelve, but the fact that I I can do it and force uh, full control of the game from a certain point. Mm -hmm makes it really strong still, right? Uh, or two racks, right? Maru does it. I can sit and watch a GSL where Maru's playing a Zerg player and predict the two racks with a 90% predictability. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I wish I cast Maru more because I'll, I'll seem like a genius to all of you guys. Yeah. The funny thing is it's actually just so easy to predict. Did he lose game one? It's a two racks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah Like, yeah. he does this. He just... Or it, did he win game one? Okay, it's a two racks. Basically, game two is like a 90% two racks rate mm -hmm. against Zerg players. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the reason why is just because sometimes it just wins, and if it doesn't, he's still pr controlling the game from this point on. Yeah. Oh. Right? And it's Maru, so... Yeah, controlling the game is important. Uh, and I, I, I think it, like, Zerg can play reactive better than the other races, for yeah. sure. It's a it's just somewhat matchup-dependent thing, but, like, I, I don't think that Terran... Uh, well, we've seen Maru play reactive Terran against Protoss... I'm the, I think the jury's still out on that. I still feel like TVP is it's cool the matchup watch. that people are most improving at still. Yeah. I think that's the uh, that's the matchup where the most can be figured out still, right? Yeah. Like there's so much left to um it, Yeah, it feels like there's still I feel like Terran should have more timings than they do right now. I don't know if that means I think there are more timings for sure that aren't being aren't used yet. Yeah. With some of these uh, with the quicker stim Double and everything. Double forges and stuff, too. Like, I, I just feel like... Um, I think if Bion was still active right now, he'd be having a good time. I think he'd be on the upswing with yeah. this match. Did you watch Mario versus... Was it Stats? I think I commentated it, didn't I? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I don't remember what I was doing. But my, my was do you know if that was, like, reactive or more of, a, like, a dictating... Uh, I'm trying to remember now, because it was the loser match. Uh... I feel like that match would be a lot of, or be a, there'd be a lot of intel about TVP, like TVP's current standing, because mm. Maru is like the most Terran-y Terran, and the and stats the most Protoss-y Protoss. No, he's not. In the macro sense, I'm talking about. Yeah, for bit. macro, yeah. He's right. The, he's the ultimate macro toss, but he's the Protoss-y of Protoss for macro. Yeah. Who's the yeah? Protoss, Protoss itself. Who, who do you think is the Protossiest Protoss of it's everybody? Patience. Pa yeah. I know that. I know that. They yes. They gave Classic that title, but it's not true. It's fucking it's patience. patience. You're right. It can't be Haas, too, because he's too crazy, but Patience is, like, the perfect Protoss if you have Protoss. Oh, to be honest, like, Classic is the one that most utilizes uh, Protoss' strengths, but Patience is what people are angry about. Yeah, Patience is perfect. <laughs> I feel if I was a balance designer, I'd just follow his ladder games and be like, so what's he doing now? <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> what, does he have a win rate right now? Yeah, What's going it, on with is that? Is it above sixty or seventy percent? Because something's going on. If it if it is, what do you think about this build? This is a quick third base mm -hmm. with just super fast charge. Um, super fast charge, super fast plus one armor. Is, what is that? Do more gateways? And what yeah. is this? That's cool. Yeah, I'm wondering if this is going to be aggressive. Like, do we see a gateway explosion? No, no, this isn't aggressive. This is defensive. This is, this is, he's making an army crushing army. I think his entire idea here, get the quick third. When the, when the uh, push comes out, mm. you crush it and you counter. 
and you stop their third. Yeah. I bet you that is his entire plan right here. Like I agree. I think that that's a very strong plan in this matchup. How many time. gateways? Well, like he's got he's going up to five right now, but I'm I guarantee you'll like add two, or three nine. more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like it. Yeah. He he definitely. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see exactly. Let's okay. See there's one him? more. Two more. Is he gonna add one more after that? Yeah. I mean, with the Templar archives, I could see him add another. Observer. Is that the first observer? I wonder if we see a prism. I'm very curious. What is it? What is it? Okay, some more. Yeah, defensive. Yeah, so this is a, yeah, this is this is a crushing the army. The thing army. is, uh, you don't really have any punish if Terran is careful. Mm. Is what I feel like with this. This is a really fast, like economy. Yes, I like it. Charging no, almost times th up perfectly. This looks like I like this type of build. This is a type of build that I oftentimes like to use stuff like this because, uh, you know. E Mm. A lot of a lot of play comes down to the first attack, and if Clem like commits here, mm -hmm. and Harson rolls through it and comes like, oh no, and he has to boost home, and the prism yeah. comes out. And well, you the funny thing him. is, Harson actually has a million options then because he can take a fourth, he could just double fourth. That's he, true. He, yeah, yeah. He Going to he blank. He could get and storm. I think there's a Templar archives. He could just yeah. counter. Like there's actually just a million options once the first. Attack I feel like the most likely one is to make Archons and counter. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, good minds actually. This is the only thing I don't like about charge. Mm -hmm. The really fast charge without sentries. Um, there's no real way to stop the Terran from kiting you forever. Yeah, you have to have the critical mass to do it. Yeah. You absolutely do. Because it, this is just not enough zealots. And it seemed like... The thing is, the two mines really messed this up a little bit. It was a pretty good split by Hursum. Uh Were his high Templars a little bit late? Because I could have seen a couple feedbacks being very, very, very yeah, good yeah. here. That force field, not, not so good. Yeah. But he's got seven gates, so like he's still going to hold. This this Archon felt... Or, uh, this the Archon's amazing here. Yeah, I was going to say, this Templar should have been Archon's earlier. Like, sure, you're holding up for what feedback? Yeah, no storm. I think if you can feed the, back those at the beginning, they can barely even cut you. Sure. Because they're just not healing anything. And now we have the... N I like the build, though. I really like this. Killing me army. This is like the invincible army. That is a very ballsy immortal. I'm just chilling and look at front. this. Clem, third base, on location. You're just rallying up. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ooh, that's painful. If you play Clem, you just sit a zealot here and here. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you play any turn. Yeah, that immortal. That. Come on. Oof. Yeah, that immortal was living life on the edge, literally. Even now, it kind of feels like Clem is doing a really good job of just picking away the zealots. Mm. Oh. That f mine fire felt. Yeah, his a his bit off. kiting with the mines, though, I think, is very very strong. I think that Harsum has missed an opportunity here to target that red medevac, and mm. I think that stuff like that actually really matters. Take away like one fifth of their healing. That's pretty, pretty decent for one stalker shot or two yeah. stalker shots. Yeah, agreed. Especially when they're doing this, where like they're stimming a ton and kiting. Yeah. Well, that's why they have to play against it. They just must kite you nonstop. Oh, this is perfect. I mean, I felt like it was a good spot for Harsum, and now I feel it's a really bad spot for Harsum. So he just keeps getting kited. I think he's still fine, though. Um, I yeah, think that there's is. still a lot of play in this position. Is that why? Why is there a forge there? Is that a safe spot for a forge? I guess. I, I think guess if, if he loses any, yeah, position if he loses, the if over. he loses this position, he's dead. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. This is definitely a high econ build from him. The amount of zealots does it almost feel like Blink would have been better at the start? Uh, I think that if you open blink with this, you're not going to be able to hold on against these pushes. I guess. Like I, the thing is, it, I oh. could I could be slightly wrong about what his goals are, and and because I haven't actually seen this exact strategy, but it kind of clicks in my brain that you would get charge in this build and try to roll through the army because you just need lots of power. Whereas the finesse of stalkers, I don't think would have been enough here. I guess you don't really roll through it ever with Blink. You just kind of hold on. Yeah, yeah. But the Zealots are definitely like a roll through it army where it's yeah. just like, well. It, the the quick charge is like, there's definitely a lot of weaknesses to it, like kiting or if they start doing medevac harassment. But uh, it gives you opportunities for a victory as well, whereas the Blink Stalker doesn't generally. Oh, you got it, finally. <laughs> uh, this is a very dead army. Blink? No. I would have blinked. Joji would have blinked. <laughs> yes, he would have. 
<clears throat> what race do you think has the most personality in it? Protoss. Protoss? For sure. Not Terran? No. There's there's personality in Terran, don't get me wrong. More than Zerg, I would say. Yeah, I'd say Zerg is easily the least personable. Yeah, but Protoss definitely. Everyone's got their own shit. It's true, too. <laughs> I think like there's a lot of um, styles. No two people play the same with Protoss. It's crazy. Yeah, when you think about the Zergs, all of the Zergs, except for maybe like... Nah, there's aggressive Zergs and there's macro Zergs. <laughs> <laughs> you got them. You got the two. Mm-hmm. And then you have aggressive there's you macro and Bly Zergs. and Impact, and then there's all the all the other Zergs. All the other Zergs. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, I like this. I like it about Harsum's play that he brings a lot of <coughs> different things for these tournaments. We've seen that a bit more lately, because a lot of times I kind of have him pegged as someone who follows the Korean meta well. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think that that's necessarily wrong or anything, but. Uh, some of the more recent WCS stops, he's been using builds that I haven't seen. Right. So, definitely doing his own thing here. Does it feel like all the Terrans have kind of gone more Korean-esque as of late than mm -hmm. they did before? Because it feels like before they had oh. more of their own style, like the European Terrans. Well, like that was not working. When the only European Terran that can be named for three years is Euthermal, Thermal, yeah. then well, yeah. you know that they're doing something actually wrong. Because uh, it just feels like Clem and you even... Uh, like some of the other Terrans have just been playing so... Well, there's there's been a stabilization into, like, this double Widowmine drop, three racks, third base, right? It's like you... <laughs> the game was here forever, yeah. Everyone forgets about... Huh? Everyone forgets about Hero Marine. <laughs> well, it's easy to forget when <laughs> you get, like, one reasonable WCS finish in two years. He's so good, too, he, though. Now he's really good. Yeah. Now he's really good. But you see, like, all these Terrans are stabilizing around the same few builds. Right. And yeah, becoming yeah. really strong, and then figuring out their, you know, the ways that they play off of those. Yeah, their their play style is um, getting much stronger. I'm trying to think if Protoss is more personable. Do you think? Because I kind of feel like StarCraft should be a more personable game where you have many options and you can play your own styles and mm -hmm. they all be viable. I'm just trying to think of what makes Protoss that race. Is it because everything is strong, or is it because you can stabilize no. really easily? Uh. Yeah, that's a good question. Like what makes Protoss the most personable race? Well, I think that there's not really a super correct way to play it because some amount of Protoss is pulling the <coughs> wool over your opponent's eyes. Right. Whenever Protoss can be played in a standard way very, very strongly, it gets nerfed because everyone complains. <laughs> think about it, right? <coughs> like when Protoss has had really strong late games that you could just get to like Zerg always has... It just it would get nerfed. Well, it do you remember the Sky Toss armies that? Yeah. We, we no, and too? those were terrible, and I'm glad yeah. that they got nerfed. I'm just saying, we. I mean, that's mostly been Zerg for yeah. the past eight years or something, right? Like, Broodlord and Fester. That's Wings of Liberty. No. And yeah, well. now, yeah. yeah. I feel like Broodlord and Fester is a kind of a side effect of um, the way we have, like, we almost are forced to play. You know what I mean? Because there's no like strong mid games where it's like we have a really strong late game, and we have an an okay early game. Mm. So we're like we're okay, we're okay, we're okay, we're surviving, we're surviving, surviving. We can't be aggressive because we'll get punished. Like if you ever see like because this of huge what? Why do you get punished? What do you mean? Being Depends like on the match. aggressive and stuff against Protoss. 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 Uh Prisms. <laughs> well, and also I, I would say that force fields <laughs> and storms. Storms. Thank you. That's what I was looking and for. And it only took you like nine and guesses. And but Warpins yeah, and the, well, the scaling of those mid-tier armies don't does not work against spellcasters, which is what we see from both mm. Protoss and Zerg. It's like Fungal destroys you too much in the late game, and Storm destroys you too much in the late game. Right. So we're forced to just go into these weird ass late games with mass spellcasters because especially they're too against Terran too. Now it feels like that as well. Like uh, when when I talk to some Zerg players, and also keep in mind Zerg players are whining a lot right now. If they s Zerg players are whining Zerg right now. I mean, in TVZ, they're, they're whining that they have to go Broodlord and Fester. They're not whining about Broodlord oh, and Fester. Okay. Yeah, don't, sorry. Yeah, they're, no, they are whining that Broodlord and Fester is too strong, and it's their only option. Yeah, I know. That's. Uh, especially when Battlecruisers are made, fine. it's like once they're made, we are like, now we're chilling. You know what I mean? We're never attacking you. Hmm. We are we are going to late game. We're going in Festers. Sure. We're going Neural. We're going, you know, mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of shitty because 
it feels like that's the one matchup where we had a really sick mid game. Like you, we've always had a really sick mid game for TVZ, right? Like Ling Bane Muta was sick. We had, um, you know, like lots of bio play and just crazy shit happened in, in the mid game. But it's kind of gone away from that. Now it's gone mm -hmm. to let's make a battle cruiser, teleport it across the map, and then play like a, a slower passive game. Yeah, yeah. Well, where, like I the think Terran player just takes bases and battle cruisers it up. But it seems like that was the progression from Ling Bane Hydra, mm -hmm. right? Because like there was there was Ling Bane Hydra in there, uh, which was very good against the mid game of Terran. And then it turned into something where you could kind of go Ling Bane Hydra, hold on, get into Broods. Mm. Terran was experimenting a, a lot with like mech versus bio play. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the exact lineage of this, but. Yeah, wh where where did the battle cruiser first exactly pop up? It seemed like. Uh, well, it, it was kind of we it had was a little blink bit fresh change. Like there was a change for letting battle cruisers blink, and then yeah, at that point yeah. they became viable. Yeah, but people weren't quite using them yet. They were being made as I'm a trying to almost. I'm trying to line up where the battle cruiser meta lines up with the Ling Bane Hydra meta because Ling Bane Hydra. I feel like Ling Bane really Hydra fell was out already of, irrelevant before then. Just no. barely. Yeah, just barely. Yeah, just barely. Well, before so we saw battle cruiser, we already saw Hydras being. I think moved it away. might have been Mech that got rid of Ling Bane Hydra. It's possible, but they also had a Hydra n nerfs from PVZ. Like the upgrades, yeah, upgrades being that split. Can't, that can't be enough, though. That can't be the reason. Well, also stylistically, I think Ling Bane Muta was coming back because we were, we had Thor nerfs, right? Yeah, that were yeah. specifically targeted for Mutas. There were other, n I don't know, and also um, Infestors were being played with a bit more, but not really at the same time. It just felt like we were trying to push away from Hydras in all matchups because they don't seem that strong. Like, there are stronger alternatives to Hydras. Even just Mass Ling Bane was stronger at some points, it felt. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a yeah. third upgrade. Like, we need either three Evos, or we need to skip a melee, or we need to skip whatever mm -hmm. for, for the mm -hmm. range upgrade. Uh, whereas Ling Bane was just, like, those upgrades were with everything. Yeah. And then, like we said, the Thor nerfs. And also, mech was becoming more viable. We also saw the the battle mech become an uh, actual thing. Mm -hmm. Even though Ling Bane Hydra's fine against that, so... Yeah, I don't think that that's what got rid of it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to try to check exactly where that the that problem is that we're looking occurred. we've looked back and think like in our memories because our memories are a little bit jumbled yeah. around a bit yeah but yeah it's, it's i'm really sad where tvz is right now because it's not fun to watch the uh the battle cruiser into like mass infester broodlord into like the terror yeah, no, trying the, to the stop mass them from infester doing that. stuff is not i really good. like the late game stuff besides that though like when we got remember the late game before mass infester broodlord we had like the nukes it was kind of still Broodlordy, but it wasn't mass infested yeah. Broodlord. Yeah. It was just different. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you remember Maru Scarlet? We had, like... And also, there were just TVZs back before Infestors felt really lame. I'm trying to remember a period or a time a timeline. Mm. Maybe it was actually just the fact that we saw nukes for the first time in a while, and it felt really interesting then. Yeah. Yeah, it, we were getting back into the late game, finally, because the, for a while there, late game actually revolved around uh, Terran pushing into Zerg mm. while they still had Hydras before Broodlords. Right? <laughs> that right. was the late game for a little bit. I do feel like there's a little tiny bit of a disconnect there. Yeah. Uh, where I'm not exactly sure what the thing was that changed the metagame. I think at some point Zergs were like, oh wait, these are units we have. The Infester. Mm. Or we're like, we used to make only three, but now we make 30. It seems like the... Uh, Marine Lord's saying that Hero Marine just popped it out. He saw it in GSL. So it, it looks like the, the BC started in Korea. It definitely did. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I know. How much do you want to bet that TY made it? How much do you want to bet? I would bet that? money on that. Yeah. I would bet money I would that bet, TY I would bet invented money the, TY the did BC it, yeah. meta. Because he I actually. I know Juan was doing it very, very early, and Juan usually steals TY builds. So. And here's a little tidbit for people. Uh, do you remember Nathanius's really stupid BC strats against Protoss? Yes. When he started doing that, and like I, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying Nathanius started that, but like <laughs> at that time, because it was kind of a meme and it was kind of stupid, TY maxed out a ladder account with the BC builds. Mm. Like he, his record was not that good, but he was high GM with it, and mm -hmm. like had practiced the hell out of it. And he only ended up using it once or twice, I think, at that time. But I know I um, wouldn't be surprised if that I know was Maru him. at some point was streaming, and he would just make a BC every game, just because he was playing really weird. We thought he was actually just like not—he didn't really want to play games. You know what I mean? 
Like sometimes when you, I think it was an obligation to stream mm. or something, and he's just like, I'm making a BC and yeah, maybe doing stuff with it. Saying Ty didn't believe in it. I don't know. Ty, yeah. Well, Ty would just be the one I would guess personally about it, but Ty or Maru. Maru is also totally a viable option here. Yeah, of course. Well, there's not many others that could have done it, really. It's those two, right? Look at that. It just feels like one of the worst possible fights you could take. Uh, huh. It's amazing that he held, though. Well, he kind of held, I guess. Wait, if this... Can this game continue? Like, why does it continue for so long? What is this? It's three Zealots. So got seven gates right now. Two Archons. Robo. No, it doesn't continue, it's dead. Well, <laughs> 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 we know it continues. No, it doesn't. Watch. I, I, pause. I mean, I GG. agree. Probably just one G, though. <laughs> the snipe. Okay, this feels like a really strange thing to me that he turns around. Does he, is this like a really, just a really is safe Is this the play? guaranteeing the victory move? Is it? Because it kind of feels like you're like, you have a guaranteed win now, but you're possibly giving him a chance to come back. Especially All right, let's with look three, at three on the Hold way. Hold on, look at this army. Look at this army. Look at this army. Yeah, if he Drop warps in, if he warps in a full round, if he makes eight more units, this beats that. Didn't he just warp in though? Two? Oh, I guess. Uh, he might have seen a couple warp ins, but you don't know for sure how many gates he has. He's on four base. I guess. So you think this is just a safer play? Yeah, safer play. Jake's shirt is messing with my eyes. The white lines on my shirt is messing with your eyes. <laughs> That's interesting. We had a little harassment down at the bottom there. Prism or something. Yeah. Doesn't seem like he did too much. He's a zealot. He's oh, back. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, we got it. Got the widow mine. Alright, what do we got? So at this point, it does feel like he's just limping. I don't know if we have to keep watching. If you want to mm. watch the end of uh, Harstum. Because this is just not an army. Yeah, it's not. Seems like Clem's got him. Well, okay, so what we saw from Harstum was one like very kind of stock textbook play on Thunderbird. Um, DT second game? Yeah, a DT second game, which was kind of it's like, okay, cool. And then this game was a very different build uh, with the super charge, fast third yeah. and a charge and plus one armor and it felt like Clem just consistently kept the see, pressure up. I f feel like we can already do like one plus one equals two and see why Neeb would do so much better against Clem. You, you know think I mean? it's just a purely a stylistic thing because he'll play more like Harstum's game one every time? I think that Neeb is just more solid all around, possibly, you know, and like he doesn't yeah, he doesn't I mean play as many like thing. risks. Like I'm not saying Harstum did anything wrong by playing these styles, but it just feels like they have the li their limitations. Whereas you think of Neeb, he just seems like a rock a lot of the times. Like a yeah. lot of his options are just very solid. Yeah, well, I think you have to put Neeb as top three foreigner, right? Yes, you just you have to do it. So certainly, if we're just talking about Protosses too. Well, I would think you have to put him as top Protoss. Showtime's great, yeah, but you know, I, that's that's generally what I would. What? Just throw out there. What? What's weird? Why can't I click on anything? What the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on we, here? We have no clicking ability. Did you break my mouse? Try clicking pause. <laughs> what try. in the world? Wait. Do we have enemy unit selection off? But that shouldn't work matter, right? Is that a thing? That is a thing. You can't select enemy units, but we're <laughs> observing. Where's Ari? I can't click the mini map either. We also have no we have no ability to box. <laughs> Reload the replay. <laughs> there we go. I got it fixed. Wait, what? Yeah. How? I'm a magician. I saw you. You just clicked on the desktop and then clicked back. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any. We we can press pause. Okay, makes no sense. All right, ten minute perfect game. Sense, man. This ten minute game already. So that's already a big difference. I don't think any of the games ended ten minutes. No, no, this is it's pretty quick. Is this one of those map? Oh yeah, it is three building wall. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure I've seen people just. No, wall it's this. a it's a four building if you have a pylon, right? Because it's three gates walls it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, like we would watch Protoss players just build the pylon here and then three full wall. Oh three yes, building yes, wall. yes. Yeah. What is that cybercore, by the way? That is, uh, I can place a gateway to stop your Hellion cybercore. Oh, full wall? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. But he has the pylon up front just in case he needs to overcharge it. <laughs> <laughs> Inter 
interesting. Why pile in here instead of here? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. You fit way more buildings on that one. Yeah, I guess. We don't value, or we don't care for Reaper jumps in our base. No, not too much apparently. Interesting. This is so annoying. Maybe also because you're keeping pressure on, you know that the Reaper is not going to be over at your base. Oh my god. That is so annoying. <laughs> it's just obnoxious. It's not even that big of a deal, it's just annoying. Alright, what do we got? Two gate, three gate robo. Pretty normal. I'm wondering if this is going to be an all in. Yeah, I don't know. If it's going to be one of these things where you just like literally walk up with your prism and kill your opponent. <laughs> kind of looks like it right now. It does. If this is going to be a 10 minute game. Killing a prism. <laughs> How many adepts does he have? Three? He has three. No, he doesn't have three adepts. He's got no adepts. They all died. Oh. Well, that sucks. Do you think it's going to be three You'll adepts? You'll have a three adepts in a second, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. You're not going to make stalkers here. Awkward. <laughs> Did they both acknowledge the fact that they... Okay, I guess not. Did they both not acknowledge that? Maybe they just both oh. didn't see it for real. That's crazy. Or Neeb saw it. Oh. That was almost the cutest thing I've ever seen. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That's okay, that so Phoenix hallucination was really cute. What do you think about this build from Neeb? Because everything looks pretty standard from Clem. It's really strange when you think about the how the Hearthstone series played out because there would already be like a fully saturated Nexus. At yeah, this point. maybe, maybe. Um, but he's taking his time with the Nexus. But three, three adept prism harass into Colossus and Forge. Basically, the trade off feels like so the, safe. The trade off feels like you're not getting a third for the possibility of harassment, right? Mm, you're with keeping this prism three, three adepts. Well, you're keeping some amount of pressure on your opponent, but you're also playing very safe. Like, this build that we're seeing from Neeb is more what I thought we would see on this patch mm -hmm. than a lot of the other things that we have seen so far in GSL and then Hearthstone Games and some other random things where people are still doing these, like, gateway-heavy things. But, like, the fact that Neeb is over there, he's like, oh, if you leave your base, I will hurt you. And then also this... getting his Colossus tech and slowing his third down slightly, like, that's exactly what... I felt like was going to have to happen in the current patch, and hmm. so I'm. This stylistically feels a lot better. Again, when we were talking about styles, like remember uh, when we watched uh, Harstam Clam, Harstam basically had no dictation of what was going on except for that DT game, which was you know not something we were talking yeah. about really. But when you look at the other games, he kind of like he went charge and he sat back and he's like, all right, you're gonna attack me. The game one, he he went double forge. He's like, all right, you're gonna attack me. This is not me being like, all right, you're gonna attack me, mm -hmm. or and if it is. But it's well, going to be like, all right, you're going to attack me, but I'm also going to harass you. Clem, right? yeah. He actually has some true. punches in the gut while you while you do stuff. He can remain active while defending. And also, uh, the fact that he's going to Colossus immediately, I think, is really smart. Because so far, Clem's, Clem's play today that we're looking at is reminding me a little bit more stylistically of like Amaru, where he's getting out there and he's keeping pressure on and he's microing very well. Mm. And against things like that, like if you are using gateway units, it's not as strong. Right. Because they can out-micro you. Uh, like, I mean, gateway units have their place, but yeah. these early pressureful attacks from Terran are very strong. Well, when you I look think. at Hearthstone, right, that was a great example. Like, he had the charge, quick charge, but mm -hmm. nothing to back it, and then uh, Clem would just stim back and kill all the zealots. Yeah, and th I was talking about that a lot with Maru, where, like, when he destroyed Classic, it's like, yeah, this guy, he goes heavier units earlier on, and he's just, he's always on gateway units, right? So Maru destroyed him, like, 4-1 in that finals, mm -hmm. and then I had been preaching for a while that you have to go Colossus to kill Maru. You yeah, can't do this I gateway remember. BS. You I can't remember. do it. And then GSL versus World, Phoenix that's what stats BS, did. Wasn't it? Huh? Do you remember me and you had this argument where you're like, you have to go Colossus? I'm like, well, Phoenixes have their place too because it was like, it was option. Like, oh, that was afterwards. Though. I'm talking I'm talking last year right before he lo lost at GSL versus the World. Okay, well, there's also that period of like Phoenixes opening against Maru every game. And you're like, well, no, that you became very Colossus. interesting because it was the question of does he mech against Phoenixes on purpose? Yeah. That was interesting. And okay. that, that, I think, still hasn't been answered exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. We were trying to do that. We were trying to figure it out. Yeah, we? we were trying to figure it out. And it was it was not entirely clear, I think. We have to do an Amaru deep dive one day. Yeah. Just, just Maru. 
Well, he needs to win a few games for Uche yeah, to so do that. Well, that's also he's part of He's still in right, GSL. Though. He'd probably win this season. We're like, you don't win enough, man. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, anyways, I'm just saying, like, against the style that Clem has been showing, I think that a defensive Colossus play is going to be very nice. With with the ability to, to harass. I think mm-hmm. this is actually mm-hmm. huge, right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. even if you have a defensive Colossus play but nothing on the other side of the map, I think Clem still just kind of does Clem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, He'll just takes his third everywhere and, and yeah. like, yeah, he, get, he gets into a really big point posturing position where he's, like, aggressive and he also has, like, a sick economy. Mm-hmm. But here, it's, like, something you have to respect. I mean, even looking at all the units at home. And another thing is if you make a Colossus defensively, you can use your warp of offensively, right? Mm-hmm. Like, three Zealots here doesn't change much. The Colossus is the big punch here. Um, whereas if you compare that to Harstam's, where his defense was, like, constantly Zealots, he had to warp in or else mm-hmm. he was going to get uh, trampled. His play was a little bit more one-dimensional in that way. It wasn't... Uh, he was giving himself big opportunities, like one big one at a time, whereas Neeb here has two opportunities for advantage. One is the prism, and two is the defense. Mm-hmm. So he's doing two things at once here, and he's the one forcing the two things because the Terran has to pressure. The Terran will never just sit at home unless they're going mech. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it's Neeb is adding an additional dimension in, I think is a reasonable way to look at it. I'm extremely curious how this ends in four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't feel like uh, Neeb's posturing for any offense. I think Neeb will shut this down, and his prism will do damage. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, that felt like a bit of a mistake. But at the same time, he essentially killed the whole army. Look at how much army's at home right now. Nice micro by Neeb. I really think Clem handled this well. Uh, like, he killed the Colossus. I mean, yeah, he loses his army, but he didn't... He kept his medevacs. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's, that's not so bad, right? <laughs> that was almost really bad for Neem. Interesting. Very interesting. I guess this just gets completely shut down, though. That's the only possible way this starts going really poorly. Whoa, whoa, wow, whoa. Wow, what a move. All right, let's find where Neeb's army is and what it is. Does Neeb not see this until now? Also, by the way, let's take time to respect Neeb. Like, this is a really sick defense. Remember we were talking about how solid he is? Hmm. Like, he hasn't been pressured at all, like, by drops or anything, but he's got a shield battery in the main, just in case. I want to see what his third And he has like units right in his main? Yeah, looking at, like, his That's vision. That's big enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I wonder if he looks at this and he's just like, I have enough to defend my third with this. So I'll leave all the rest of my units in my main. Yeah, I think for sure he can know how big the army is right now because this is such a standard build. Also, there's a... <laughs> he's, well, he's had so much intel throughout the game. Like, you can basically know what they can have right now. Yeah. But yeah, this this right there is really impressive. It's really impressive. I feel like... I, and just these units being here right now... So, like, the difference... And this is empty, it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, imagine if that drop came here. Hmm. Right. That's so interesting. All right, let's see it. Still scary. Good split. Oh my god. <laughs> that hero Colossus, though. I love that he's targeting medevacs. Yeah, that was something we felt Harston wasn't doing enough. Like, even look at, like, the retreating medevacs get harassed so much. Oh, that... Well, that's the long-term unit of, of Terran. If you are reducing medevacs throughout the game, you are gaining the advantage. It's like killing Colossus for Protoss. It's the same thing. This is something Neeb does better than I think a lot of Protosses. It's just like his uh, awareness for the future of the game. I think all Protosses do it quite well, but Neeb is like another level. It feels like you very mean, like rarely planning for the future. Yeah, very rarely do we see like this kind of preparation where he's like defending all fronts. Like when we watched Ty versus Neeb, that was one of the best series I think I've ever watched ever for TVP. Mm. Like that what was it? I think that was round of four. Yeah, that was round of four. Like, there were predictions. They were predicting where they were going to attack. Mm-hmm. Like, that That's was just incredible. Good. You see the targeting and the medevacs as much as he possibly it's can, It's basically too. constant, yeah. Yeah, it's. I really favor that type of play. The thing is, when you target medevacs, I think a lot of the time that makes the game longer as well because you're not reducing army. Oh, wow, he got a lot 13, of 13, yeah. Actually. Interesting. But as you start to pop medevacs, I mean, that's... High quality stuff. Look at those medevacs. Like, it's actually so obvious that he's doing it. Like, look at this. <laughs> like, that is incredible, right? Mm. The fact that he hasn't killed all of those is also impressive, though. 
So Nevis is setting up for an attack now. And look at that, nine gates. Yeah. He's really on top of adding those. Yeah, this feels really scary now, especially with these medevacs being so low. It's like you could, once he gets on top of this army, all three of those can just die. Mm. Where's the prism? Oh, there it is. This is another thing about the prism that's been so nice, is he always has the potential to counterattack whenever he feels comfortable. If you don't have a prism, um, like Harston basically never got one for observers in the beginning, you just don't have that possible potential mm. counterattack always. Yeah. Like there's always the potential. Active units, especially as you get better, are just so important. I want to talk about the adepts that he has in his army right now, because I think that this is an underutilized unit in mm -hmm. this matchup at the moment. And I think with an army like this, adepts can be very, very strong. He has 1-1 one, one already, mm -hmm. so obviously that really helps the Adepts quite a bit. But I don't think that it is always about getting charge and getting in there. Adepts actually tank quite well against uh, Marauders, which is mm -hmm. nice. Obviously that's a huge part of the Zalt, but the Zalts get far ahead of everything. When you have smaller numbers, they're not as strong. Mm -hmm. Whereas this entire ball is very microable for Neve. Yeah, I really like this type of play. And I, I think that we could see Protoss uh, utilize Adepts in these situations more. I think even in late game, there are some limited times where you actually want Adepts in your army instead of Zealots. Because the Zealots are kind of like Lings or Banelings, where right. you fight with them and they die, and you have to replace <laughs> them. Whereas the Adepts can just kite with the entire army, tanking the whole time, but also dealing too. damage. Because if you're trying to kite with... An, you've seen people kite with zealot armies. The zealots, like, charge in and then walk back and then, yeah, yeah. like, turn around and walk slowly towards the marauder shells. You can even use these as body blockers so that they can't retreat, too. Like sure. If you shade yeah. forward, uh, the mines possibly can splash the entire Terran army. But also, retreating in with glaived adepts, or not glaived, non-glaived adepts here, uh, is really hard. Use them with body blockers. And he, he can warp in eight zealots now, too, if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm curious how this fight goes, though. I feel like we're going to see a shade very soon. I don't think he'll... Like, I don't think an actual shade will ever occur here. I think those are only for tanking. I'm definitely going to see a shade, even if it cancels. It's possible that we see a cancel shade. But even just for vision, it's nice. Let's see. I don't think he's going to shade at all. Like, literally not at all. Look at this retargeting. That wow. was so cool. <laughs> that was... That was so many Neve retargets. did not want to fight that either. Yeah. He was... He, th the reason why he was out front is because he wanted it to go off. That was so cool. <laughs> like, just give up on it now? Jeez, him. It's like, all right. Because I need an observer. The, the adepts aren't even in the front, so... Well, now he's got so many stalkers, it doesn't matter as much. But there they are. See this tank? Yeah. They're doing a great job. Sure. Notice the lack of shade. I see that. Yeah. But that army just got obliterated. Mm. Was there even a Terran army there originally? Like, did no. anything even die? <laughs> <laughs> Is that BM? <laughs> no, I don't think that was. <laughs> you got to show the respect to Neve, though. Neve's uh -huh. like the Dawn, man. You can't, you can't screw with Neve. The Dawn. That was uh, it, that was interesting though, seeing the difference there. The fact that he gave himself a prism. He got the right stuff to be able to defend at home and harass on the other side. He slowed down his economy a little bit for that. I don't know. Yeah. It was just it was very solid, very good play from Neeb. That was like I feel like that was unbelievably a high level play too. From Neeb. Yeah. The fact that he killed him right there. Yeah. Like, I'm wondering if something whoa. triggered that or if he just always planned to kill him there. No, I, I think that was all reactionary. He realized that he had a window. I think that, that is amazing. Okay, Triton is second map. Something, something, medium amount of Vikings artosis. Is that an actual quote? Yes, that's an actual quote. Uh, medium amounts of Vikings are worse than no Vikings. I agree. Like when someone, when you're fighting against Colossus, you need the one It's something I talked about a lot in the in the past. Where yes, you need you need yeah. enough Vikings that you actually kill the Colossus in yeah. the battle. How many times have you seen Vikings. someone with four Vikings <laughs> or six Vikings against three or four Colossus? And they just sit there. <laughs> and, like, you've killed one Colossus by the time your whole army's dead. And it's like, you realize okay, another eight minute that that would have been anything else. It would have been better. Anything else. <laughs> that could have been SCVs. It's uh, the biggest waste. Wait. Uh, Marine Lord, you play Neeb a lot. What do you feel, if you had to sum Neeb's style up in, in, like, one word, how would you do it? I mean, I know that's a really weird thing to ask. But I'm just curious, like, what comes to mind when you, if you had to play Neeb? As a Terran player who plays him a lot, do you think of, like, well-rounded, or do you think maybe, like, 
I don't know what it is. I'm quite curious because I actually felt like he's see that what Marine Lord. This guy agrees with me. Yeah, if you I don't see have that. enough Vikings. <laughs> you better have none. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so garbage unless you have enough. I'll try to, to do copy their job. paste it. All right. I'm quite curious because <laughs> he actually plays a lot in Europe. So I'm yeah, sure yeah, he does. A lot. Yeah. No, Neve is. Uh, if 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 you had to describe Neve, what would you say about him, Norgrad? I th well rounded would be my description, but I feel like it's not as accurate as I, I feel like it he's was. he's a, a level above everyone. Mm. I I feel like he's actually uh, like um, he's a similar type of player to someone like Serral, where mm -hmm. you're like this guy is just so good at everything, and so smart, right. you know. Uh, because like I think that last game uh, really shows that the fact. So he gave himself this really this opportunity where with a gigantic amount of skill you can do a lot, and then found a window most people won't use with a unit set most people won't use yeah. like those adepts yeah, like he didn't even shade them those those were just for tanking he's like yeah no I make a few of these right. and I sprinkle those in and I attack right now because I've whittled everything down just enough and it's just. Yeah, That's like a brick wall of some like sort, Even like earlier right? when he was building shield batteries and splitting his army perfectly, he's like, what could possibly derail this spot? Like, and he felt like he was counting army and left the right amount of stuff at each base. Mm. Like, yeah, he, he's just a very, very it's full almost understanding. Like he, he's looking down for the game top down with no fog of war. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something like it's that. It's kind of what it feels like. He cuts most corners. He cut most corner than most toss, but have an insane wide range of builds, so y you cut less corners as Terran, and it makes some very weird tiny advantage for Neve when you do your first seven minute <laughs> push. Interesting. That's a very interesting word. I agree. I understand what you're saying, though. Yeah. It, it it's if I'm if I'm if I can interpret this correctly, it's like uh, the way that Neve decides to take small risks mm -hmm. makes for some complicated positions that Neve is good at or something like Which that. Which makes a lot of sense Maybe when, you, that's when you put that in context with the last game, right? Where like that No, that was a complicated like I yeah. I didn't see a kill timing there, but he did. Like yeah. And we could say it was a bit of a risk what he was doing, but at the same time it made a lot of sense. Well, I think that his actual opening was very strong. Like it it looked to me like Yeah, this is this is the fact that he slowed the third, he had the counter harassment going on, and he used and he that had the same person to kill him later too. Yeah. <laughs> like he stuff. basically had a full r circle of like stuff to mm -hmm. come back and kill him with. It. It's very interesting. Yeah. He can grow into any build. That's true too. That that's actually really true. When you think about it, if you're the Terran player, you sit back in that position, and that prism's harassing you and stuff. You really don't know where it could go. Yeah, like you could true. just go to Twilight, you could go charge Templar, or whatever, and just play like a game like that. Mm -hmm. Could have four depths don't mean anything. It's yeah. yeah, getting a prism out is just it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's interesting too to think about. It's yeah, there are a lot of things that can occur. I think that and also Neeb would explore all of those opportunities too. Mm -hmm. Like I don't sit back and like okay, this is so Neeb. You know what I mean? Like oh yeah, could be Neeb to do double forges and go blink. Could be Neeb to go straight into Colossus and. and you know, that kind of stuff. I think the Colossus makes the most sense with it because oh, then you can yeah. actually defend because you know an attack is coming out. Sure. But, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> he can throw in any build. At the same time, he can be extremely dumb, greedy, and 60 probe super early. Hmm. He could. That's true. No matter if you had a one or two base disadvantage, he expands so quickly. Well, I feel like he didn't expand quickly in that last game. All right, so... But he expanded quick enough that he wasn't behind econ economically either, right? Yeah, but he didn't expand at the, you know... Like the, the Hearthstone timing expand. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of gateway users, like gateway-focused players, uh, expand unbelievably quickly. Yeah. Whether it's off Stargate or not. Twilight and Stargate openers. I mean, that Hearthstone one was real basically fast. as fast as possible, I think. With like going straight into charge first. Yeah, I think so. I think if you do anything else, you just die. Probably. Okay, so we have a couple Hellions coming out this game. Oracle opener from Neeb. Why do you think Neeb does... I would say character... Uh, he is almost bad against Zerg as like a, like a characteristic of himself. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Like he, It feels like every time he plays against a, a Zerg, he gets punished. Like Scarlet will take him down. Like 
um, I don't know. You know what I mean, though. Like he, he feels like he's just a weaker player against Zerg in general hmm. compared to other some other Protosses. Well, I think that his skill set that he built up over time uh, against Zerg got nerfed into the ground so hard because if you look back at 2016, he was probably actually the best late game PVZ in the yeah, world. Yeah, he was sky tossing and stuff. Yeah, and he was better at getting into those positions even before that when it was when the Tempest was like four supply. Mm. He was the best at that stuff. Yeah, really. he was the best at the Tempests too. Because you remember yeah. PvP back then too. Oh yeah, no, he and was. He won Super Tournament against yeah. Trap with Mass Tempest, basically. Yeah, Disruptor into that yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, but and he was the best yeah. at that. Yeah, I think that his the style that he formulated over the years against Zerg like really got nerfed heavily. Like you can't play a late game PvZ anymore. Yeah. Like right now, it's just not that playable. And then you put on top of that the other two best foreigners are Zerg. Oh my Maybe God. even other three best foreigners are Zerg. Or four best foreigners, even you know. <laughs> Seriously, it's like most of the best foreigners are Zerg players. So, I think that, that that makes it hard and makes him underperform relative to his skill. You would think that that would be like where he'd be dedicating all of his time. Then we don't know how he dedicates his time. Mm. Like he might be focusing a lot on PVZ, but PVZ, yeah, it, I think it's tough because the the Koreans just get hyper aggressive, and then the Korean Zergs are not. There's yeah. not as many of them as in Europe, and Obviously, Europe has Serral kind of leading the way, who's better than Dark or Rogue. So it's kind yeah. of they're also all different too. <laughs> it's I think that it's I think it's a very hard thing to There's be. There's like a small stylistic difference between the Europeans and the Koreans and Zerg as uh, Zerg players. Yes, yeah, there is. It's so interesting too when you we should really do an episode just on comparing Z Zergs. Like we'll take Rogue and uh, maybe Rogue Dark and Solar versus like Rainer, Serral, and who would be the Lambo. third? Lambo. Lambo. Like, they're so different, all of those people. Mm. But I think all three of the Europeans have something in common. All three of the Koreans have something in common, too. But you have to really yeah, look into yeah. it. I think it's really I don't know what the intriguing. I, I actually don't think the Koreans have anything in common. I don't think that they... Rogue, and S Rogue, Dark, and Solar have nothing in common? Pretty much, yeah. I disagree with that. But I can see why you would say that as well. Yeah, I don't no. think you're completely wrong Even to add say that. Even into that, I'm like, oh, these guys are really different. No, no, no like Really different. Really? All of them are really different? Not just Really I different. Yeah. I can see why you would say that again, but I don't okay. agree. Okay. Well, we'll have to look at it. Yeah, we'd have to. But we, The funny thing is we'd have to look at them playing one person, like watch them all play against Juan or something, like all three of them, because mm. everybody's going to deal with... W we have to find one person for them all to deal with because they'll all deal with them differently, I think, but similar at the same time. Mm. Who would we pick as our palette? Our palette oh, player. I'm not sure. That's a, that's a <laughs> like hard. We'd have to pick one player that has. That's a really hard question, too, because that player would play differently against the other players because everyone knows each other. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Clem's dead. Yeah, I, I just backed it up a little bit because we saw 20 SCVs died while we were trying to talk about something else. But it's like three gate adept with oracles. So what does, what does he have? What, I what is Clem doing here? Nothing too weird. No, he's playing pretty normal. Yeah. Why is this a, just why like, is hey, this a build, build order loss, Marine Lord? I don't understand. Were you talking about him? It was a build order loss. Like, what did Clem do that just made him die? Is his engineering bay a little late, I guess? I don't know. Four minutes. Did he go for the mind drop? What did he do? I kind of missed this at mid earlier game. So this is just in-depth with Marine Lord. I know. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> actually very interesting to... It is. Get a pros perspective here. I think Marine Lord's a smart one, too. Yeah, let's just back up and see what he was actually doing. Oh, yeah, he did a Hellion run by. That's why. Never mind. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So already the two extra gates got added. There we go. Oh. Adept Scouting saw it. the Hellions and kept the Oracle at mm -hmm. home. Okay, yeah, that's big. If this Oracle yeah, is not here. That's perfect. So the game just kind oh, of yeah. ends, probably. Well, it certainly goes poorly. Also this, what? He basically killed nothing originally? Okay, three probes for four Hellions is not worth. Why no Engineer Bay immediately? Because it feels like the Engineer Bay was mistimed mm. by like 15 seconds, it felt. Like even if Oracle comes across the map right now, it's really obnoxious, no? Like still no Engineer Bay, still. Well, low energy on that one, right? So he's probably waiting for two? I don't know. That's a good question. 
Is Neve gonna push with the Oracle and Adept, but you can can't commit defensively because if he's Chrono Boost, he's probably taking a fast third. That's very true too. So I guess the possi there's a lot of possibilities off the back foot of this, like with your four Hellions dying. Is Neeb could just take a third immediately mm. and chrono the uh, workers and just harass you with oracles, which is we've seen like a hundred times. It's absolutely, nothing special. Absolutely, absolutely. Like you didn't see the gateways get added, so you just don't know. Like one gate, two, three oracle third base is not uncommon at all. But yeah. It wasn't for a long time, and especially after killing those Hellions, you could do it. Like now he knows, obviously, but <laughs> it's a little late. He's again utilizing Adepts a lot. This is very interesting. My god. Yeah, this is so is, much This damage. couldn't have gone better. Couldn't have gone worse. Yeah. That is the opposite of couldn't have gone better. The yeah. Artosis. But also the same. It's, it is the same, depending on which player you're talking about. So that was... Uh, so the game ends here. What do we have to take... What is the takeaway so far between Clem and... and or uh, Harstam and uh, Neeb? I yeah, feel like the takeaway so far is that Neeb just dictates the game so much more. Like even the last game and this game, just there's so much, so much more dictating the game. I feel like the. Uh, okay, so. I feel like Harsom's builds mm -hmm. are. Okay, so Neeb's play to me seems more subtle, in these two series that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, he's waiting. He's giving himself opportunities. He's waiting, and he gains an edge, and then he immediately capitalizes upon it and mm -hmm. gets a ton of damage and either wins the game. Well, we've seen that twice now, right? Where it's just, like, basically game-winning moves. Uh, whereas Harstam is giving himself opportunities where he can gain a giant lead, like the DT rush, and then the quick third base with the quick charge. These are both games where if things go a little bit right for Harstam, that's going to be a big deal. Right. But he's not necessarily in charge of that. Whereas... Neeb is a little bit more in charge with the way he's playing and yeah. then executing the, the, the follow-up. So that's that's kind of the way I'm looking at it right now. So that, that game is over. I think we should go into the next. <laughs> Marine Lord thinks the biggest difference the c is Clem practices with Harstam and knows that Harstam has a tiny range of builds and will never get out of his range. And Clem either doesn't practice with Neeb or respect a big range of Neeb of builds Neeb can play. That's interesting. I think that is something that you have to consider when you when yeah. you're playing in a in a tournament against that's someone that yeah, you practice. Yeah, that's with. that's the inner mind that we can't look into. That yeah. we can we can definitely get people who know th about this. This thing would to be tell what us. the best thing would be would when we have pro gamers to actually like if we had Clem or if we had Neeb or somebody here, mm -hmm. that would be the best case. We should probably remember these kind of things. Yeah, yeah. No, well, it is it is very interesting, but there's other takeaways that you can have as well. Like, I I don't want to pretend that this is all like blind countering type things that are occurring. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like just because he knows the range of Harstam better. Like, I guess he's a little bit more ready for some of these things. Well, the DT game specifically felt like he was truly ready. <laughs> like it did. Like he yeah, saved the was scans and and yeah, he looked for it and you know. If that was a ladder game on the Korean server. We might see Maru die to that. Yeah. You will know, look at the Twilight and see a robo at the natural and be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, this yeah. is pretty normal, you know? I like this. Because there's this jump mm -hmm. spot. There's also this one, but this one's already kind of covered by yeah, the yeah. Uh, stalker here. It's good stuff. It's annoying. Really, really annoying. Almost got it. <laughs> the robo opening here. Okay, robo. So, is this the same ro robo that we saw last game where we go observer, warp presume, and three adepts and harass? Yeah, or that's do a good you think question. this is more of like a third base for robo? No, I think it's going to be similar to game one on Acropolis. Especially because he's actually fighting. It makes me think that even more. What, with the Adept? Yeah. Because you're, like, lowering the Marine count for later. Mm. Normally, you don't obviously don't want to lose the Adept. But well, he doesn't have the three gates, so it looks like it is a little bit different here. It's Colossus, though. Or is it Disruptor Drop? Disruptor Drop, you think? I don't know. The Prism's just sitting there. 
Well, it's because he has nothing to put in it. <laughs> but it's a prism. You don't need to wait at home to put things in it. That's true. Ah, well, that's disruptor drum. Yeah. Now, this is interesting, okay. <laughs> so, first off, speaking of what Marine Lord said, holy shit, does he ever have a wide range. Like, yeah. I did feel like he was more... Like, I th knew Neeb could do a ton of things, but this feels like a really big range. You know what I mean? Well, certainly. He's using very, very, very different plays. Oh, my, oh God. my God. This is going to oh, be so, is so sad. brutal. Oh, he knows. He knows. Oh, well. Meh. It's you been do what meh. you can do. It can still be really, really scary, though. You know, he's, uh, Neve is still fine. It's just he was looking for that money shot there. Yeah. I like how the prism comes with this army for Micro, and he just lets the Disruptor walk. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, now it's back in. Now that it has a shot. What? Your rule? They've never split? Never change the direction of there the disruptor. There was four marines split. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Dude. Okay, wait, does he not back. chip the let's tank there? Back. Does he not chip the tank there if he does not turn oh, it? We'll see. <laughs> People get so greedy. As soon as Terran units split or Zerg units or whatever units split, yeah. <laughs> the Protoss user, I don't care who you are, uh -huh. tries to turn and chase. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. I know. How many times do we need to see it not work and have it not work in our games before we stop doing this? Click it where it's going to go and leave it. That's it. Right, let's see where he clicks it originally. Okay. Let's see it. Okay, it's clicked here. Okay. Wait, is it? Yeah. I think th I think here? that's what the click is. Oh wait, no, that's a that's a clem click. That's a clem click. Oh, with this the ball's here. Okay. I think we move that one, Artosis. Oh, but he turns around. I think. Watch. Ah! Well, he was <laughs> he was gonna hit nothing if we didn't move it. <laughs> was it not gonna chip the tank? Uh, I believe it was gonna chip the I tank. I think if it didn't stop here, it would have chipped the tank. But it stopped for a Look, second. Look, I'm just saying. <laughs> Whether I'm right or wrong on this particular one, you know I'm right overall. <laughs> sure. Stop changing the direction of disruptor shots. You are doing yourself a disservice. I love how strong you never feel turn about it this. and get four marauders. That doesn't happen. <laughs> it never happens. It's never happened. It's never going to happen. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Let the fucking thing shoot. It's ridiculous. Kills me. <laughs> my favorite part about watching Disruptors and you commentary because I know you're going to complain as soon as it moves and it always moves. Always. Yeah. They're just like, oh, he split. I bet I can cha turn and chase it. It's like, those <laughs> don't last that long. Did you know that? I, I Two seconds that. and they're gone. I don't know how fast you think you are. I love when they shoot at like five of them and they move all five. That's my favorite one. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like see that is a that is a juicy prospect, isn't it? It is. <laughs> that was a good turnaround. <laughs> that one. That one was acceptable. FYI, oh, that was a good oh is he going to get it? He almost Ooh, got it from the other side. It felt like he could have gotten it. <laughs> there weren't two tanks there. Where's the prism? Did it die? No. Oh, no, there is. These two tanks are so juicy. I know he feels that, too. He wants it bad. He wants it, yeah. I think even that one was like he wanted it. Oh, he did it. He didn't move it. That's right. And notice how he got a kill. He did get a kill. You're right. How to trigger our toast. Let's just move the disruptors. It is. It's true. <coughs> oh. Does a really good job of making it look like he's going to lose all his shit. Wow. Ooh. Nice. You should be able to pick up your disruptor after you throw the ball out. Oh, yeah, that sounds balanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a great... <laughs> we should, let's add that in. No, <laughs> I think you should be able to shoot it while it's in the prism. To be now honest. that is a change I would be down for. And when it's in the prism, it's an anti-air ball. Ooh. Like Good a way to deal with mutas there. <laughs> you don't ever need to go on, on robo units again. <laughs> People hate warp gate. There you go. That's a good way to fix it. Oh. Ouch. If he had one more force field, I think Clem just loses right here, right now. Mm. But it's a good thing. Actually, it kind of looks yeah. okay. Huh. Ooh, that Colossus. This was almost really close to being really, really yeah. bad. Yeah. Where's our disruptor? Oops. That was weird. Click on the prism. 
<laughs> Imagine almost dying and Neva just fucking around with a disruptor in the main. <laughs> Interesting. Give each race a baneling problem solved. That's not a good idea. No. Oh, oh my god. What what are toast <laughs> what are you gonna say? Nothing. <laughs> I just wanna see if Neeb can write his name in cursive with the disruptor ball before it explodes. That's what I wanna <laughs> see. <laughs> you probably can. By the way, cursive writing is one of the least useful things ever in my entire yeah, life. Yeah. It's almost gone for good. Woo! He didn't move it. That's right. He should have. <laughs> Did he lose the prism? He did. Oh. Huh. Look at that. And nine workers on the other side. Does this trigger Neeb to just go for it? Look at this sloppy fight. <laughs> <laughs> I love the hold position, Zelots. Screw wasting charge. Mmm, I love it. I love oh. the move commands. Neeb's yeah, Neeb's army control seems really good. Mm -hmm. He's look at look tasically. The Even like back of the Zealots, yeah, it's amazing. This is just, it's so good. Real. This was sick too. That charge on the starport, so good. Wait, no, that part was bad. But I'm talking about the command good. center. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this gets killed. This is one of those weird fights where like you lose everything as a protest, and you're supposed to lose the game, but also 30 SCVs died. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you killed enough of the army even too. This yeah, it's just true. straight up good. He doesn't have blink, so you just... <laughs> so you're about to lose this fight. One... I love how he takes the time of day to actually save one stalker after yeah. that fight. Like shouldn't have even <laughs> saved it. <laughs> he really <laughs> shouldn't have. Should be dead, that stalker. It's too much... I want him to recall. I want to go He's to the top left. I want to recall it. Oh, blink. Not no fight. blink yet, yeah. If only he had chroned that one more time. He would have gotten that stalker out. He would have made it. Look at this run by. <laughs> that is the... The most protoss he's out run by I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, it is. Right click to the dead center of the mirror line. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold positions it. I love Neeb's use of hold position. Yeah, he's very good at He uh, like we saw during that battle, obviously the Zolot's pulling back. It's really nice. Yeah, just his army. I I think it he just looks at the game a little bit differently than a lot of people do. Mm. And he like looks at the fight and kind of like almost predetermines how it's going to go and then like moves his units in accordance to that. You mm. know what I mean? Oh, that is so cool. Oh my god. That is so cool. Wow. Yeah, I would Yeah, I would too. leave after that recall <laughs> too. <laughs> that was cool. I think a lot of a lot of Protoss would just lost that, but now he can send that. He I bet if these recall finishes, he just re-right clicks it to the same spot. Yeah, probably. Right? That's amazing. That was a great that was a great move. Yeah. I feel like this was a very weird episode that we've done here. <laughs> because it was like very strange builds from Hearthstone that were like kind of interesting but didn't work out. And then mm. Neeb being like, I am so good at this game. Look at these things I can do. You can just do everything. Featuring Marine Lord, too. Yeah, featuring Marine Lord. Thank you, Marine Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we can end it if you want. Or we can go with another one. How many? How many were replays? We have. We have a couple questions. Well, we have the whole pack, but that was all the all the games oh, for, for those two series. Oh yeah, it was a three zero. Yeah, yeah. Need well, I think we took games. away a lot from the two different style. Like they stylistically matched up very different. Neeb and uh, Harstem. Yeah. And I think Neeb's play style in general is just so much better against Clem. Like when you look at those games against Harstem, we're like, well, Harstem's not really doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like his decisions his own brand are fine. A little bit. Yeah, like he, it felt like his economy is good, but at the same time, he is letting Clem just do whatever he wants every time. Like, there's almost no, there's except for the DT game. Which no, no, no. I I actually think that he opened with builds that do somewhat dictate the game, but Clem blocked them correctly. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because sure. they aren't they aren't as sturdy. Well, they dictate it builds. in a certain way. They dictate it in the fact that he can like he can play his own game later. The the DT build as well as like he did the one standard build that he won with. Then the the DT build dictates it but yes. it can go very wrong and then the other build uh kind of dictates it because you kind of have to get in there because mm. he has three bases so quickly and uh 
Yeah, so I, I think things went wrong for him, but he was trying to dictate. Right. Whereas, Clem like, couldn't block Neeb's game one was reactive, for sure. Acropolis was reactive, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, he had he had options, but it was reactive overall. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Wow. Neeb's micro is much better. Yeah, there's no denying that Neeb's efficiency during his fights were much, much his better. His army control is very, very strong. Like, uh, we watch uh, Harston bleed zealots constantly, mm -hmm. and all of that adds up. Like, But we didn't really see Neeb do that at all. Like, well, you see him. He'll charge in and fight, and then he'll pull back as the Terran is kiting away. Mm, getting all of, of his range units away. in first, and then goes with everything. The adept thing on Acropolis as well was yeah. one of those interesting things where he's like, I don't want this stuff out in the front. It's going to stay right next to my army for kiting, or yeah. not for kiting, but rather for, for tanking. It was good. It was good stuff. I, w I almost want to say that the only difference is army control, but it's not true. I think uh, Marine Lord actually summed it up really well hmm. r earlier with it just like Neeb having a huge wide range of, of stuff that he can do. He and, certainly and showed that. Felt like it wasn't necessarily respected the same as it was for, for Hearthstone. Hmm. But how do you respect something like that? <laughs> it's very that's hard. I think that's just what it is to be a very top tier Protoss. Sure. Where mm -hmm. you can see, you know, if you think about the top, like, five Protosses in the world, they do a lot of things. Mm. Like, they have a lot in their tool bag. It's true. And I think that that's, you know, a very important thing to be a top Protoss that can actually win tournaments. As opposed to just being a very strong Protoss. Interesting. So we have questions? This yeah, we have, a, we have a couple questions in here. Awesome. Uh, Sinquin Lily. I really enjoyed your last episode of In Depth, the Pylon Show. Uh... Since I'm now a ma an expert on map making, <laughs> and having already been an expert on map making, which maps of the current map pool for GSL and WCS would you personally like to see get rotate out, and why? Ooh, what do you think about this current map pool? GSL map pool or W or ladder Both. map pool? Well, the ladder map pool I, lines I, up with WCS. The GSL right, so. GSL map pool is really interesting. I put in a lot of personal feedback on the GSL map pool. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, I actually helped design. Uh, what's that four player map? Yeah, I actually helped design Cobalt a lot. Originally, Cobalt was very similar to Frost. I'm just like, no, we're not doing mm. this again. And it seems like it was a. It, I mean, like it's the best of a bad situation is the best way I could sum up Cobalt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's a four player map, but I I, I tried my best to not make it um like more playery. <laughs> yeah, kinda. And also, it was less uh, positional abuse, like di on these. On these axes, yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's still cross position abuse. There's nothing we can do about it, yeah. honestly. Um, but speaking on that, a GSL map pool feels a lot better balanced, and a lot more thought went into it. Like the only problem with the GSL map pool is it's not ladder. Yeah. So there's a lot of maps that are just gonna get vetoed because they're not on the ladder. Yeah, but sometimes they come back a little bit. Um. Well, I wanted to bring up the, because I actually don't know the current map pool that well. Yeah. It's been it's pretty fresh, and I've been laddering slowly. Rotating out maps, I would think. I would. It depends. I like Thunderbird as a map. It's a little bit older. I'm glad that Thunderbird is in it still right now. Yeah. I. Yeah. Thunderbird gives us certain things that are like kind of important to learn from. I don't like Winter's Gate as a map, but it's also new. I have to give it some time still. I don't like any of these maps. Or some of these maps are really weird. I don't know how to answer this question. I don't have enough games to really yeah. decisively say I would rotate out maps. I'm also a person who likes to give maps a long run. Uh, if they're deemed shit after a season, that's that's long enough for me to rotate it out. But I definitely feel like if we get the same vetoes all the time, I'd rotate that stuff out, which yeah. is actually kind of part of the next question. Uh, do you think the GSL map pool changes should be more vicious, like including four new maps? I personally do think that, but every okay, so... Again. When we saw the same three maps every series, yes, they like what was it? Port Alexander and Kairos and what was that other one? Starts with a C, right? Was it Cyber Catalyst? Uh, no, not Catalyst. That was a different season. But well, Catalyst, Catalyst was, was played every, every single yeah. game. But anyways, you guys get the point. Like when it's the exact same three maps, yeah, all the time. I would just rotate that stuff out. Just rotate massively because that's uninteresting. There's a lot of because I, I work with the the guy who d decides that there's a lot of consideration for not rotating out too many maps because he doesn't want um people to pr like especially because certain let's say 
certain round of 16 sometimes are played on a certain map pool and then the other half of that round of 16 will be played on another map pool and he feels like if you rotate out four or five maps that's kind of unfair to the people yeah. that are playing on the other half it, the problem is that wcs and gsl are not synced that yeah. is a true problem right so these decisions are much harder for the gsl side because it's kind of thrown on them mid mid season <laughs> so half the seasons are played on yeah and yeah, or you're playing so. the you know the other people are playing on the old map pool now which mm -hmm. is just weird so there's you can't really be too aggressive with it because it's unfair to half the round of 16. I think between round of 16 to round of 8, like that jump, be as aggressive as you want. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you know, But only give them a week, too. It can be a little bit tough. That's, that's the same thing, too, right? Because then, you, then yeah. you're giving the first half of the round of 8 a harder time than the second half of the round of yeah. 8. Even so those three days would make a big difference when it's only right. a week. So there's, there's a certain uh, aggressiveness you can do. You can't replace the entire map mm -hmm. pool and have like certain people get three days and the other people get two yeah. weeks. It's just not fair. It's it's a hard question. I think they're doing pretty well considering. Yeah. Just know that that's all of those things are considered when the map pools are being made. Like every all of it. Right. Uh, another question here. Uh, what are your thoughts on high impact air units like prisms, BCs, medevacs uh, having such high mobility? Um, it tends to. Uh, that's an interesting question. Like, what do we mean by such high mobility? Like the prism being high, highly mobile. Okay, so th think about those units that are named prism, BC, medevac. Cool. The those things pack a punch. Yes. And are utterly mobile, right? I think it leads to a lot of gimmicks. It feels like a lot of possible gimmicks, especially with the BC, because it can just teleport across the entire map. That you can be really risky. You just fucking walk them in, and then just blink out once you're once you've been punished. And mm -hmm. the same thing with a. a yeah. Prism or whatever. Prisms are a little bit more punishable, but, but medevacs are really unpunishable. Like you can just boost out if you yeah. ever have any trouble. Well, it, it feels like you have a lot of potential to just possibly like end the game or cripple somebody, but also don't have a lot of risk in it with the certain units. Mm. Depends on the stage of the game. That's kind the of a the hard amount of question. punishment that they they give is like huge for it's the risk uh, too. Yeah, and the DPS in general is so high. In StarCraft 2, yeah. that makes it kind of an interesting problem as well. Just because you can kill... Like, a medevac can kill a nexus or a hatchery so quickly. Mm. You know, it's not... It's like, if your stuff is enough out of position, it's just dead. And that's it. it right. Whereas, that is not something that you're likely to see in most RTS games, I would say. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like it. I think, overall, we should try and get away from this. If you're going to do a high-risk, high-reward, it should be high-risk, high-reward, not high-reward medium or low risk mm. because then you're kind of just rewarding people to make m uh, making risks that they can't really be punished for uh i think that's part of the reason why bcs are so strong now like there are there are ways to punish it and we may see more punishments later but in general mm. the bc feels like it's a very solid unit you can go out mm -hmm. be risky with it people blink on top of like five queens and walk away from it you know what i mean like, like it happens um yeah. I just don't like that a lot. It, a lot of games feel really weird and just not fun <laughs> when that happens. Mm -hmm. Same with drops and same with uh, prisms when, like, one prism warps in ten zealots and your base is dead. It's like, oh, yeah, the game's over now, kind of. The thing is, I I think that there is a need for uh, these units with high mobility uh, to be very effective because otherwise we run into pure death ball play, which you don't want, especially as we were talking about the the spellcasters like mass infester, mass. I feel like the muta is in a good place for that. Where it can do, it can wreck terrible, terrible damage. Yeah, but it can also just be. Yeah, the mutalisk is very cool right now. I, I feel like the mutalisk is in a really good spot. It's in a really neat spot, especially in CVP. I think. So for high mo mobile units, I like the muta because it's an investment. It's really it's expensive. That's the thing. It is a big investment. It's a high it risk. It can be counted and high hard reward, though, right? Yeah. Like that's the thing with the muta. It actually is a high risk, high it's reward. It's a very unit. high skill unit to use. Like you have to really know what you're doing strategy wise, tactically. Yeah. Uh, the micro isn't them. hard, but like. The moving it around to where you need it at certain times can be very difficult, I think. The decision to make them, too, is like a really big decision. Because yeah. like sometimes Terran players will just kill you. It's serious like if yeah. you're making mutas. Because 10 mutas, is ten, it's a thousand, a thousand. Yeah. So. That's a lot of banelings. Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot. It's a lot of units that aren't yeah. in the yeah. map at all, too. So, the, yeah, that I think the mutalisk, yeah, that is a very interesting unit. More yeah. interesting than these, but you well, do, that's need, an it, example you do of need to have this high and high impact mobile. unit. Because it can just end the game. Yeah, but well. I think this question specifically is more about the ones that are not. No, I'm just saying that I would like most of our units, like a high yeah. mobile, high impact units, to be similar. I know it's hard to do that, but something yeah. that's that is high risk, high reward. Something you have to decide: Am I going to do this and go for this 
thing mm -hmm. that could be scouted and killed. Whereas when you make the BC and they scout it, you're like, okay. Yeah, it doesn't You matter. actually don't care. So what are you going to attack? And the, the same BC with the prism. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I don't care. But it's it's yeah, going to be utilized prism. fully. You're right. like, guess what? I'm going to have one for the rest of the game whether exactly. you kill it or not. <laughs> so I would, yeah, that, that's basically where I, my, my am on those units in general. Well, Sanko and Lily, thank you for the thank questions you guys. and the support. And thank the you guys all for the support. Yeah. By the way, we appreciate all of you. What about the shoes? He asks. Oh. Uh, what shoes? The ones you're supposed to eat. Shoes. I said shoe. Interest occurs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ghost Frog asks. Uh, are there factors consistent across players of all races that account for some players being particularly strong at mirror matchups? Oh, that's an interesting question. That's interesting. But I have to think of specific players that are really strong mirror matchups now. All right, for for I me specifically, because oh, okay. yeah. I actually have a really really strong ZVZ compared to my other matchups, where it's like considerably higher. The only thing that consistent over it is like my control. Like for example, if I play Ling Bane in other matchups, it's really strong. Or my, but I overall like it's hard to say. You, you need a specific player in mind. I'm trying to think of a specific player besides let me. me. Let me throw out something there Sure. for that. Okay. I, in my opinion, the way that I look at mirror matchups is that they are more cognitive than the other matchups in many, many ways and less mechanical I in agree. many ways. Because you're given the same amount of unit or the yeah. same unit structure. Yeah. So there's, your mind more. there's a bit more of a dance because you have the same crap that it's more about things like out positioning or tricking your Build opponent. Build orders even. Can whereas. Be really, really hard. Yeah. Whereas you look at like a TVZ, for instance, where it's not getting into the late game stages and it's like Marine Medivac versus Ling Bane or something. And it's like, okay, you have to be so quick and mechanically on top of things. So I always look at it as more of a cognitive thing. And I always feel like that is backed up when you look at the players that are really good at the matchups. Like, who's mm. the best TV tier? It's TY. That guy is brilliant. Yeah. Right? Who's the best pvp -er? Yeah, that's a good question. PvP is in a little bit of a funny spot. But I feel like that would also be a really cognitive... Classic generally has been extremely good at PvP. Like, I think mm. o if you take a measurement of the last few years, of the last, let's say, three to four years... I was SOS in PvP. He was, like, right up at the top of it. For yeah. a very long time. In fact, like Classic beat him in that reverse sweep because SOS only went blank four times in a row, which was super <laughs> stupid in my opinion. But uh, before that, SOS was pretty dominant in PvP. But I think Classic over the last few years is probably the best. Yeah. I mean, so I was going to go with something along the lines of unit control and that kind of stuff because that is something that is really important in mirrors because you're basically you're utilizing as much of the unit as possible. But I completely 100% agree with what you're saying. Too. TVT, I think unit control doesn't come into play as it much. Does. PVP, it does a TVT, little bit more, though. Well, it's not all as much. positioning and unit control. Yeah, it, well, it's positioning. It's Well, that is, you're as putting your units as in As hard as you might hear millions, my siege tanks that are in position. Okay, for example, let, let's, 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 let's talk about Ravens and TVT. That's a unit control unit. You're using it. Your unit. You're controlling it. Okay, here. Unit. Let me show you. All right. Now, okay, come on. Yeah, you got to give it. And oh, there. I shift clicked out my my Raven spells. You have That's to so decide sick. when you're going to use your energy and stuff. You know, like it's which is cognitive, not yeah, micro. True. I agree. Yeah. But I'm. I. Yeah. It's I fine. accept your apology. I'm not apologizing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ghost Frog, thank you for the question. That's a good one, actually. I really like that. I like the idea of what makes you good in a certain matchup. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I think we did it. Yeah. I think it was uh, an interesting episode. We can sell out now. Yes. That's something we need to do. Guys. We appreciate you all. We do. Come join our Discord server. Come uh, it's support in the, us. It's in the little YouTube link and all that. And I think we have a bot command. If we don't, we'll get I'm one moving our house closer to Artosis just so we can do this. Uh. So think about that. No. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we did sign a two-year contract for the next team house, so that's exciting. Uh, congratulations. We have two more years of team house. Excellent. And... Yeah, it'll be closer. So we'll, uh, I think we live about 30 or 40 minutes away. I'm going to bike here. So it'll be nice. Can't wait. There will be lots of stuff we can do, uh, collabing and stuff, me and Artosis. And there will be a lot more in-depth content that will be unique and mm -hmm. fun for everybody. If you want to support us in that in our endeavors with in-depth, you can do so by Patreon or donations while we're streaming or whatever. Mm -hmm. well, any way to support us is great. Yes, patreon.com forward slash in-depth SC2. Yeah. We thank you all uh, that have already supported. That's really a big deal for us. So thank you. Yeah, we thank you. And, and we will see you guys next time.